So I have you uh, talking about your own, but I also have Beyonce playing. So if I'm not listening to you, it's because Beyonce is singing, and she's like way more important. <laughs> no, I, I completely understand that. Uh, I'm glad. Queen B is is clearly more important than. That's fine. I like the way you say That's Queen okay. B. <laughs> Queen, Queen Bay. I'm glad. Beyonce. Oh. Beyonce. Uh-huh. Beyonce. She came to St. Louis not too long ago, and I, I didn't buy tickets to her concert, and my friends went, and I'm so jealous. I should have gone. I should have gone. Good times, good times. Uh, yeah, maybe next time. Yep. One day I'll actually get to a concert for real. Ah, we've got to go. Like a metal show of some kind. Some kind. Yes, yes. There's this tour in the summer that's called Metal Mayhem that usually has a lot of like good metal bands. Okay. But it's like an all-day affair. It's pretty... That'd be an, in, an intense introduction to concert dumb. It's like, yeah, you think one concert is great? Go to concerts all day in the heat and look at all these people get heat stroke and not realize it because they're drinking beer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like the one guy at the metal concert with, with bottles <laughs> of water. And a big floppy hat and like sunscreen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Zinc on the nose. The whole nine. Exactly. That is probably the most metal thing you could ever do. <laughs> Zinc on the nose? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> mm, All right. Years ago when we got to see Lemmy and Slipknot, it was amazing. Alrighty. Uh, Alrighty what? Streaming. Everything's streaming, everything's cool. Uh, yep. There's one viewer that appears to be me. <laughs> we have one viewer! Yay. Oh, it's you. Oh. <laughs> oh it's just me. Uh, look, I'm, I'm wearing a Mega Man shirt that the people in the stream can see, but you can't. I can't, but I'm just gonna... I, I trust you. I believe you. I'm actually wearing a, a Ninja Turtles shirt. I, You know, these uh, these streams, they're built on honesty and trust. Oh, yeah. The, the stream that trust built. Here we are. Here we are. Let's make robots hit each other. For 12 hours. Have you got the... Um, embed set up over on... on your side? Yeah, it's going to pop up on a blog post, which in turn goes to our the most recent blog post goes on our main page okay which might mean that people are automatically streaming as soon as they go to your page like they don't even it have might. To press the button I think wait you have to press buttons god the internet's so complicated right <laughs> you have to press that play button Jeez, so much effort. Too much effort. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> you know, I feel about it. So, what's your caffeine of choice? Uh, I have cold pressed coffee with um, that Mocha International coffee stuff. I instead of using milk, I use that. All right. It's a um, nice iced cappuccino made at home. So fancy. I, know, I just right? Earl Grey tea. Cause that's usually my my go-to, unless oh. I need the big guns. Coffee works really well on me, so I have to be careful. Oh, you're lucky. Uh, well, that's because I, I don't drink it a whole lot. So when I do, I'm just it's nice. Yeah. Like you're not already. You're like. The highest energy person that I know. <laughs> yeah. Now imagine me on coffee. <laughs> it's, it's a sight. It's a sight. I basically, to be... just assume you're you're constantly uh, on like powdered caffeine. You're like snorting it in the bathroom. That's the only explanation. Caffeine is what I'm snorting in the bathroom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, we're streaming. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like. Uh... 
I, I, I don't have any explanation for my, I guess, natural perky peppiness. I mean, I woke up um, maybe an hour and a half ago, and this is where I'm at right now. <laughs> Shoulder dancing. Just uh, woke up like this. Hashtag no filter. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> I, ch- I was going to wear a Skepticon shirt, but then I was like, no one's going to be able to see my shirt anyway, so... <laughs> space it is! It's an Android space. So it is. I happen to have an Android phone. I happen to have... Yeah? I happen to like robots. I like Do robots. You? I like turtles. I noticed the turtle thing. On your Skype profile here you're like you're nose to nose with the turtle yeah it's not a real turtle though it's like a bronze turtle statue at a zoo i forget which well, that makes sense but like the way the turtle's head fits into your face it looks like you know you guys are of, of one piece because it just like fits mm-hmm. right into that crook right. <laughs> yeah i've got a beak like a turtle anyway so look at this schnoz got whatever it. So in seven minutes, I'm going to press start. Yeah. So far, we've got, like, what? One guy who's pledged to every game you beat? Yeah, I know. Yeah, Alex has said for every game, $25. So no pressure, but if you fuck this up. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to fuck this up. (laughs) What a great mantra to have. That's very inspiring. (laughs) (laughs) I'll get to the end and I won't have beaten a single boss. Oh, God. <laughs> I will die three imagine? million times against Bomb Man on <laughs> Mega Man 1. Have you warmed up your fingers? Are you doing, like, stretches and, you know, getting them all ready to go? I'd show you, but you can't see my video. But I can't. But on Twitch stream, I'm showing you, you can... my rigorous thumb exercises. Rigorous <laughs> thumb rigorous. exercises. You can just imagine what that entails. I... I can't really think of anything that doesn't involve, I mean, I just, my, you say rigorous thumb exercises and my brain goes straight into the gutter, so I'm just. <laughs> Obviously, that's exactly where, what I was doing on <laughs> okay, Twitch stream live. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you're doing one of these and I'm just being ridiculous, but, um, right. yeah. So my controller of choice is a uh, wireless uh, Logitech F710. Uh, please, Sounds like an airplane. please send me free ones, Logitech. Thank you. <laughs> Logitech, if you're watching. If you're watching, and I know you're not. There's there's really great potential for sponsorship here. Right. Like we could we could do a deal. Uh, you could have you could have a complete amateur like me uh, flog your wireless controllers. It's basically like a PlayStation controller, or an Xbox controller, actually, more yeah. like. Uh, and I'm going to play the original Mega Man games with it. Which is like, the Nintendo controller was like this little weird square rectangular thing. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen them. It's Have rough. I seen them? I don't know. I don't know. What, <laughs> Rude! What's your experience like? Like, okay, are you I've a played video games since I was a youngin'. Like, I've played really? all of that. So what's that, like, uh, Xbox One? Since you were a youngin? I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> no, I've, I've been playing video games <clears throat> since I was little. Admittedly, when I was younger, my brother would always hog it. So I'm less skilled at earlier video games because my brother um, was, yeah, being rude and just taking over all the time. No, well, I was that jerk to my sister. Uh, so Mega you... Man. You... Yeah. <laughs> I was that jerk to my sister. You're not I'm... actually my sister. My sister is somebody completely different. Right. Um, to be clear for everyone watching, we're not related. <laughs> <laughs> but Buster Bunny and Babs Bunny, no relation. <laughs> oh, that just dated me. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I'm really bad at like all those Mario games and Mega Man and... and... Basically, anything before the N64, I'm pretty crap at, because I never got any actual practice. <laughs> it's true. Although, you know, um, Goldeneye on N64, 
That's awesome. That was the best game for N64. Ugh, multiplayer. my jam. The first real first-person shooter. And if you tilted the cart, everybody would, like, freak out and yes. turn into this weird, wobbly, non-Euclidean horror thing. If you tilted the cart. Yes, you, like, pushed it on the left side. I've never done that. What are you talking about? Okay, so there was a, there was this really famous glitch with Nintendo 64 Goldeneye mm -hmm. that if you sort of put pressure on one side of the cart so that part of it was like not making contact anymore, mm -hmm. the game would keep playing, but all of the sprites would turn into this weird body horror, Cthulian freak out, polygons everywhere thing. Oh you my could god! Keep playing, but all of the people were just this weird thing. This weird. Look it up on YouTube. It, it's great. I feel like this is going to give me nightmares, and I don't want to look it up on YouTube. Oh, it's some nightmare fuel. Uh, we've got a person in Twitch chat. That's actually impressive that somebody has decided to come by and say hello. Twitch chat. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Twitch chat. Visual eight seven seven. Good to good to meet you. We're going to be Welcome. doing Mega Man Marathon uh, to raise fund for raise funds for Skepticon. Mm. Uh, in like two seconds, I two might seconds? actually. I, I got start. two minutes. Sorry, two minutes. Two minutes and thirty-four seconds. Oh man, are we going to be that precise? You're going to be on the nose. Oh yeah. Wow. Hi. <laughs> that's really. I'm impressed. Very you, you don't know my work ethic. <laughs> I mean, I kind of do. Kinda. I mean, you've heard all those times that I'm like, I'm at work! Boo! Yeah. But that's about it. Work ethic. <laughs> work ethic. <laughs> Going to work even when you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> that's pretty yeah. much what this is. 12 <laughs> oh hours God, in Mega no. Man. <laughs> you offered to do this, don't do that to me. Oh God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm gonna make you, make you pay for it. You know what? <laughs> I expect nothing less. Yeah. So do you want to start telling people about uh, Skepticon? Tell people where to go and donate? You want to start start the show? You'll oh, be I our master to... of ceremonies I... while I'm the master of megas? I thought we had to wait until 10 o'clock before we did anything. Well, I mean, you can start talking. I, I have to wait until 10 o'clock to press play. I've been talking this entire time. Have you not been paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who are you? <laughs> oh, God. I don't know anymore. Oh, God. I feel like I'm losing my voice. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. And I'm back. Well, tell people who you are. Oh, yeah. That's important. All right. Well, hello, Internet. So good to meet you. It's been such a long time. My name is Lauren Lane, and I am the Presidente, and I'm the co-founder of Skepticon, the nation's largest skeptic convention that's held yearly in Springfield, Missouri in November. This year is the 11th. 12th and 13th. Uh, you can find more information about Skepticon. Oh no. Or you can find more what? information about Skepticon at. Oh my god, really? The <laughs> yeah, right one seriously. I see the website? It borks? Yep. <sighs> okay. Skepticon.org is where you can find us. Excellent. Okay, great. <laughs> And what sets us apart from other conferences like us is that we are completely free to attend. We do not charge any ticket pricing to come. You can show up and hang out with us. All you have to do is get to Springfield. Um, and, and we run entirely upon donations from people such as yourself. So that's why we're doing this video game marathon today, thing today is to raise some money because we're at about 30% of our fundraising goal for the year. So we're, we're looking for some support. And we would love it if you would donate some money our way. I am going to press start now because we are 16 minutes into my playthrough. Oh! My goal is to play as many Mega Man games as I can to completion using unlimited lives uh, for the first six NES games. Uh, the idea behind that is not to make things easier because the Mega Man games are brutal. Uh, you basically get unlimited continues in every one of these games, and so this cuts out 15 seconds of boringness while I continue and then get back to where I was before. It also cuts out my 
need to grind for lives later, uh, but it won't make the actual game any easier. I'll show everybody that I am only using, right now, the one cheat code, infinite lives. I don't know if you can see that on the stream. Probably not quite. Um, that is the only cheat that I'm using, and the only cheat that I'll use in any of these games. Uh, I made copious notes about boss orders and where special items are through the first six games, and I'm going to start playing immediately. I'm going to go fight Bomb Man. You're going to love this. I'm going to fight Dave Guy, and then Dave Guy again, and then Dave Guy. His special weapon is Taxes. His special weapon is Taxes? Okay, so you know Steven Universe with the Dave guy and the guys, guys under your supervision. Surely you know that reference. That's like episode four of Steven Universe or something. It's entirely <laughs> referencing Mega Man. That oh my god! That is Mega Man. I had no idea. Wow. Oh man, I am starting well. I don't know what's oh. going on, but my controller is not responding to all of my clicks. I'm like sliding left to right. I might have to actually change my battery immediately. Oh my god. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Off to a great start, Jason. Uh, I know, right? You're instilling a lot of confidence. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna make this happen. I got lots of spare batteries that are charged here. I got a rechargeable battery dock over here. And there's three of these in there. So, um, mm. what makes Skepticon so great? I mean, aside from the fact that it's a free conference and, you know, epic people are running it. Tell us all about it. I will. Kill it's... time, damn. What? Kill damn. time? We got all day. <laughs> you have all day. I got 12 hours of this nonsense. I... It's true. <laughs> Alright, let's see if this is any better. Uh, what? Okay. Alright. Yeah, right? I mean, I, I can't know. see what's happening, so I just... Just assume I'm being awesome. <laughs> uh, I don't trust that that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> so, what, uh, what kind of speakers can we expect to see this year at Skepticon? All kinds of good ones. Well, that's great. But it's a really hard yeah. question to ask because all of the speakers have such different backgrounds and topics and interests. So we have, I want to say, 11 speakers, and we're going to have a couple panels this year, and there's going to be a Godless Pervert Story Hour. Ooh, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. Tell us what that is. About the Godless Pervert Story Hour? Yeah, tell us all about it. Well, I don't know a whole lot about... Godless Pervert Story Hour, except that Greta is going to run it. It'll be on Friday night, and from we hosted one a couple years ago, and basically the gist of it is people get on stage and share really sexy stories. Okay. That sounds fun. I yeah. don't have any sexy stories. You don't have any? No. I'm a 37-year-old version. Interesting. No. Tell let's let, no. I want to hear about this. <laughs> Tell me more about that. You should be skeptical of claims that I make, you know, Lauren. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to believe the lie. All right. All right. Because you know, the, the idea that that I am the thirty-seven-year-old virgin is clearly such a compelling lie. Um, how many Mega Man games are you playing today? Yeah. LOL stereotypes. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, video gamers. Uh, oh my god, I almost had my first death. Uh, I've got a death counter on the screen. Woo! I just oh man, death number one. No, I didn't. It didn't happen. I did not die. Almost, though. Oh! 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 Oh. <laughs> no. What's really great is that because you can't hear the stream, you can't hear what's actually going on on the screen. You can't see what's going on on the screen, so you just have to trust that I'm not lying about anything. 
Well, I mean, I did trust you until you said these words to me, and now I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't... Oh. I was now just I trusting did. you blindly until you say some stuff like that, and now I just don't know anymore. So, now okay. I died. I have had my first death. And it was by... R.I.P. It was by a, <clears throat> one of these bullet bomb things. Just narrowly avoided getting hit by again. Whoa. <laughs> Death number two. <laughs> You're doing well. You are. Thanks. <laughs> You're such a great motivator. <laughs> You're doing well. <laughs> You're doing so good. <laughs> So the going plan is I get through as many Mega Man games as I can. Yes. Some people are donating amounts of money in, I guess, pledges. Pledge yeah. money per game that I defeat. And considering that I am now at Bomb Man, I should be at least one one hundredth of the way toward all six games completed. Progress is progress! Yep. <laughs> I actually kind of hope that you're like, you've got stuff that you can do in the meantime, because... Doesn't it be I do! Otherwise? I mean, I'm sitting at a computer, I, I can find things to do. Okay. But, you know, we can also chat all about Skepticon. Good. Ooh, oh man, we could we could do a- we could take it back. Talk about the early days of Skepticon. The wild, wild west of being an undergrad student. Oh my god, yeah. Tell us all about that. No, <laughs> okay. What, uh... Well... What, what was the wild, wild west like? <laughs> Tell us all about the wild, wild west. Well, it was wild. <laughs> uh, was it, did did it involve Will Smith? You know, Steampunk? it didn't, but it should have. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I definitely think so. No. <laughs> steampunk? No, no steampunk going on. Not today. I don't think I've ever done any steampunk ever. No. Not even during the Wild Wild West days. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. 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 But Skepticon was started nine years ago. Wow. Holy crap. Yeah, Skepticon is my longest ever relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Let's brag about that. Yes, tell Let's us more brag. about your, your relationships. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was started nine years ago whenever I was an undergrad at Missouri State University in Springfield, Missouri. Myself and JT and our Yourself and JT. Pirate? You, you had a hiccup yeah. there. Yourself and JT. Oh, yes. Myself and JT. And our merry group of pirates. And the we had a group, a student group called the Missouri State University Chapter of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. We could not think of a longer name, so that's the one we went with. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Chapter yeah. of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Yeah, that's what started um, a lot of... Well, it's what started the activism for basically everyone in that group is, is flying spaghetti monsterism. We thought it was hilarious and we wanted to dress as pirates and scare all of the pastors that would come on to the campus and tell us we were going to hell. <laughs> so we would dress like pirates and hold signs that like, heaven has a beer volcano and that kind of thing and just make a bigger ruckus and a bigger spectacle around them so that no one took them seriously. It worked okay. extremely well. So it was basically sig signal jamming for the proselytizers on campus. Uh, yeah, essentially. And it, it worked so well. I mean, there was a time that we built an entire pirate fort the night before Brother Jed showed up, including oh, like... Who's Brother pets. Jed? Oh, Brother Jed is one of the more well-known, uh, I, I guess, of evangelicals that comes around to campuses in the Midwest. I'm not sure he goes to the coast, but he goes basically campus to campus 
and just spouts the most ridiculous stuff. I think there was one time, uh, yeah, I distinctly remember him holding two electrical cords and he was banging together the male and female ends and he was like, see, it doesn't work. Because you know, that's like a really great metaphor for relationships and God and stuff. So cool. Yes, because you, you plug in to your partner's genitals, you see. That's yeah. How, that's how sex works. We're pretty sure. I mean, at, because you're a 37 year old virgin, you probably don't know. <laughs> ow. <laughs> ow. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Take it back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know what's really great is that I made fun of myself, and then I gave you the open license to make fun of me back, and then you're like, I'm so sorry, and I'm the Canadian. I just want to point that out, but I am the Canadian here. I don't, I don't know what to say. I have so many conflicting feelings being nicer than a Canadian right now. I just need to stare off into the distance and think. Think about your life choices, Lauren. Yeah, I'm questioning everything now. Thanks. Jeez. <laughs> so I've already died a few times oh, while no. we were talking. Uh, being dumped into pits by those little flippy platform things that the people on the Twitch stream can see and you cannot. This is really great. I, I love the fact that you can't see what's going on. And I really so... can't. <laughs> and so as far I, as I I'm know, like you've already beaten the first game. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, clearly. First game yeah. is super easy, you guys. Jeez. Nailing it. I don't know what's going on, but uh, one of the platforms just stops coming back. It's probably because you're cursed. Oh, uh, yeah. Cursed image number 764. It's me falling into a pit. You're doing great. Thanks. Go, Jay. So, it's your birthday. <laughs> it is not, in fact, my birthday. Go, Jason. False. It was Stephanie's birthday yesterday. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, but yeah, um, we we had a, a merry group of pirates, and really, we got so good at showing up whenever evangelicals would come on campus that all we would have to do within... 50 pirates at any given free speech zone at our campus waving flags and making a ruckus so what was going on with the free speech zones tell us about that free speech zones on our campus were just like two outdoor stages where it was a designated free speech zone where you could basically rent it or or like put your name down on a block of time or i guess stand there um, and just say whatever you want because it was a free speech zone which is kind of ridiculous that there was a zone for free speech because I'm sure there's like oh there's got to be some sort of document somewhere that guarantees free speech so I don't know <laughs> yeah what's freedom of speech I don't know something somebody made up a long time ago that no one believes in anymore words freedom words was Freedom of speech is about uh, being allowed to be really cruel to people and them not being allowed to say, hey, that was kind of shitty. That's what yeah. freedom of speech is. Yeah, freedom of speech is stepping on people's heads and expecting them to do nothing. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. That's been my experience. Okay, this got dark really fast. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah. laughs> uh, the free speech zones, we did test them. I think Rob Lair, who is our videographer for Skepticon, he hosted a few concerts. Okay. Uh, and by concerts, oh, that's probably not. A, it was like a, a battle of the bands, or like all day bands. And one of the bands had some curse words in their songs. Namely, oh, no. wait, can I cuss on this or is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, one of the songs had the word fuck in it. And they tried to shut down his concert because someone had said fuck in the free speech zone. So that led to one of our better rallies where we all held signs that said fuck on the, on the free speech zone. <laughs> People loved that. Fuck on the free speech zone. No sex in the champagne. <laughs> yeah, uh, we just held signs that said "fuck." We didn't do um, any actions associated with that word. Just okay, so it wasn't a free free love zone. It was a free speech zone. No, just okay. yeah, just the word. Just the word. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and then I, man, we just we just kept upping the ante with our 
with our antics. Like we we had Ask an Atheist day, and then we would sell baked goods in exchange for souls. And at one point, we we hosted Jed, brother Jed, one of our favorites. We hosted a carnival around him, where we had games that you could play and a, a photo op with a giant flying spaghetti monster. And we raised money for Heifer International by letting people throw water balloons at JT because. As like the campus atheist, he was responsible for a lot of tough conversations and deconversions of a lot of the students, and they, some of them didn't like him that much. So we made a lot of money off of the throw a water balloon at JT activity. Okay. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah, and to top it off, we convinced Brother Jed to let us raise, like if we could raise 50 bucks within the next 20 minutes that we, he would let someone throw a water balloon at him. And he actually did it? Yeah, and it only took us maybe two minutes to find the 50 bucks. <laughs> that's pretty cool, actually. That's like that's pretty cool of him. It um, really was! I was so surprised. He was very game. Very game. Which, you know, you wouldn't expect from somebody who's there to proselytize. Yeah, and to bang together electrical cords and tell you you're going to hell. That kind right, of thing. Right. Yep. No, it makes sense. So then, uh, after the campus atheists thing, you decided to create a convention around this? Like throw uh, water no. balloons at JT as a convention? <laughs> no, there's no water balloon convention we're running right now. Uh, bring speakers to campus, and I was like, you know, that's great, let's do it. And so we coordinated it, and we had a lot of fun that first year, and everyone really enjoyed do it again the next year and then we just kept growing and, and getting interest off of campus we didn't think that anyone gave a crap about what we were doing off campus but that was very much not the case and we've all found skepticon to be a truly rewarding experience and so here we are nine years later still making this conference we've moved off campus we've moved to a big venue where we take over the whole thing and you know we had a budget of um like that first year, maybe a couple hundred dollars because each student group was given, I think, three hundred dollars to spend on stuff, and we had to apply for a special grant to get more money for plane tickets. And now uh, it's about it takes about thirty to forty thousand dollars to put on Sketchcon these days. Okay, and where does all that money come from? It comes from people who donate. It's Skepticon is run by volunteer power, and it's. It's operated, like all of our funds are, come from people like you and I who are just giving $20, $30 at a time who want to see Skepticon happen. 12 hours to encourage. Or their time, $20, yeah. $20 yeah. <laughs> That's time. true. That's true. Yeah, uh, the, bulk, the bulk of the fundraising comes from just the community who likes Skepticon and wants to see it carry on to the next year, and that's how we've been, a we've been able to keep it both free and operating nine years later. Cool. Yeah. It would admittedly be very, very much, oh my god, words, a lot easier to fundraise if we charged a, a ticket price, but we're very, everyone at Skepticon feels very adamant that we would never do that because we see no reason to because we can fundraise pretty well without, and also the accessibility. We want anyone who can come to come and enjoy all of the activities we have in store. Right, because it's a class issue that atheist cons are pretty much only accessible to people who can pay their way. Yeah, uh, largely, I mean, I can't think of any other conference where you don't pay to get in the door, at least. No, I can't either. I'm pretty sure that Skepticon is the only free one. Um, I mean, free as in... Yeah. No ticket. No ticket. Um, there's still obviously the travel costs and the costs of putting on the place and, yeah. and getting food while you're there. Um, you yeah. A con budget for when I have to go to cons. Right. And you know, uh, budget wise, we do have a few things that we, we've introduced last year a food pantry. So if you are on a tight budget, we have. Um, food available for you to eat, no questions asked, come by, grab a snack, grab a meal, do whatever you need to do. And we're going to be doing that again this year and expanding it a little bit. 
and we're also going to have like a prom clothing exchange if you don't have something formal that you'd like to wear and we are going to have all sizes and all kinds of clothes come by and grab something those are all going to be just outside the main the main venue um keep going for a few minutes i'm going to jump away from the, the computer screen for a moment oh okay uh, keep talking okay. i'll Hi. be right back where are you going don't leave me <laughs> I kind of want to sing all by myself right now, but considering this is being recorded, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> anyway, Skepticon. Let's see what else we can talk about. Being in Springfield, you know, a lot of people think, like, why do you have it in Springfield, Missouri? Well, I mean, that's where we went to undergrad, and that's where we started it, first of all. And secondly, uh, Springfield is largely centrally located in the Bible Belt. We find that the conference it is very much needed where it is. It's, I know it's not shocking to hear, but the Midwest is kind of a, oh, I don't know, what's the dirt? Religious! It's very religious. So having Skepticon in Springfield is horribly convenient for all of us heathens who want to get together with other heathens at least once a year. And that in, in Springfield is a very a very affordable city to both host a conference in and to attend a conference at. It's, uh, yeah, affordable. Good old affordable Springfield. Never you mind that the headquarters of the Assemblies of God is there. I mean, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> so I'm back, so could you start over? <laughs> oh my god! No! <laughs> no, okay. Uh, I'm sure what you said was amazing and great. Uh, oh, wow. Thanks. Yeah. Go look. Now, I was just dealing with logistics of um, my, my wife is going to be going out and puppy yeah. is going to need to be watched to make sure that oh. she does oh. not get into things. So that's okay. I was Hopefully. talking about why uh, Skepticon is in Springfield. Ah, ah. Hmm. I was going to make some references to that at some point or another, but I'm going to refrain from what I want to say. <laughs> it's far away. <laughs> Oh, away, come on. Rural. I mean, it's far away for you, but for me, it's not, so. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and I, I, you're, you're what counts out of the two of us making the Skepticon happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I'm a little bit more important than you in this manner. Yeah, I kind of figured. Um, yeah. <laughs> in all other manners, though, I'm clearly the more important of us. Um, clearly. Uh <laughs> totally. That's exactly what I was thinking. So I'm already at boss number two, uh, Gutsman, who I'm going to throw bombs at until he explodes. Wait, his name is Gutsman? Gutsman, yeah. You're going to love the names of these bosses. I'm going to call them out when I get to their level. No, you should, because I want to know. <laughs> okay, so Gutsman yeah. is a robot that was built to be... Uh, a construction worker or something like that and he can lift heavy things and his entire thing is he picks up these blocks that are in the room that you're with and he throws them at you and that's it uh, I'm going to throw bombs at him until he explodes this sounds like um, really great conflict resolution mm -hmm. yeah I think I so wish you luck. I wish you luck <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to uh, try to shoot him down with my regular weapon right now. Uh, I'm at about a quarter of my life bar. Uh, I'm going to try to shoot him down with my regular weapon so I don't waste any of my special weapon bombs. Because I know I'm about to die. So, let's see what happens. Oh. Let's... I mean, I won't see it, but you will. <laughs> ah, he threw a rock at me. Oh, how unexpected. That's... I'm shocked, honestly. Right? <laughs> Oh, his strategy is to do the thing that I told you he was going to do. Oh, what a hello, crazy hello. random happenstance. Oh my gosh, wow! Who the thunk? Uh, not me, that's for sure. And I just got blown up. I actually got him down to about half of his life bar, so I'm pretty yeah. impressed with myself. I'm just saying I'm pretty good. Pretty good for a guy who has not played this in 15 years. Really? Really. Really, really. Played? Oh, it's not wow. like it's, you don't like revisit the Mega Man's every once in a while just to like relive the good old days or something. That's what I'm doing right now. Oh, oh, so you're, <laughs> <laughs> suddenly I feel used. 
<laughs> All right. Well, um, I'm going to talk about who's attending Skepticon this year, who That'd our speakers great. are, while you continue to fight things and not get crushed by rocks. Sounds good to me. Great. Who are our speakers? <laughs> our, the first speaker I want to talk about is Laura Thomas, who is the Deputy State Director, California, of the Drug Policy Alliance. Okay. Yeah, super fancy title. Uh, what's funny about this speaker is it was a name. She's a woman who was recommended to Skepticon by Greta and Ingrid because they, like, every year we have a suggestion box with, with like, paper that you can stuff in at, at the merchandise booth at Skepticon. And they took the liberty of, like, standing there and stuffing about 12 names in. No. <laughs> <laughs> and this was one of them. And it's a great one. That's um, hilarious. Uh, I know, so right? Greta, Greta Christina. And, yes. Um, her partner Ingrid, mm -hmm. uh, and who are they were attendees, them. and they stuffed the ballot with uh, who was this this person that you said was the drug policy? I'm yeah, sorry, she's I, the deputy state again? director, California of the Drug Policy Alliance. What was her name again? I actually missed it. Thomas. Last time. I think Laura Thomas. <laughs> Laura Thomas. Okay, I, I think Skype cut out, or I my brain cut out. I'm not sure. I was, well, I was throwing bombs at a guy. Stop throwing bombs at guys and listen to me. I'm. <laughs> that's why we're here, not to watch you, to listen to me. <laughs> well, I mean both. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. trying to keep people entertained while they're here. I can see a bunch of people who are uh, who are in the chat now. This is actually kind of fun. Oh, great! Uh, I uh, I'm saying Howdy. hello to the people in the chat. I've got my attention on the game. Oh, um, I see. Everybody else has got their attention on you, so oh. entertain people. Nope, sir. You look like don't, a dance or something. Don't mess this up, Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> got it. It's all you. All <laughs> you. I'm not ready for this kind of. Anyway, so Laura Thomas, uh, she will be talking this year about drugs. Everybody's favorite topic. <laughs> no, she's going to be talking. It's her title is a skeptic's guide to the war on drugs. And it's going to be about why some drugs are legal and others are illegal. Are drugs really winning the war on drugs? And it's huh. going to be an evidence-based look on how you know we got into this whole mess and how we can get out of it. Are drugs really winning the war on drugs? Well, if it's a war on drugs, it's probably you know people versus drugs. So are drugs winning or people winning? I don't know. We shall see at Skepticon. So, for a little backstory, I'm a Canadian, and I'm not used to all of this war on thing. War on esoteric concept is a very American thing. Like, war on happiness. It's America. I, I mean, now that you live here in America, like, no one told you when they gave you, your, like, your patriotic outfit that now you just have to declare war on words? I... No, nobody actually even gave me a patriotic outfit. I'm a little upset about that. I didn't know there was an outfit that came with living here. There is. It's, it's uh, you wear the entire like American flag, everything, but then you get mad when people like step on an American, like an actual flag. But you can wear one. It's cool. Okay, so you can you can put an American flag on your butt. Yes. But like accidentally sitting on one would be bad, unless yeah. it's actually like attached to your butt. Exactly. How does that work? Now you're getting it. See this, America. <laughs> so, America. <laughs> so yes, I'm a Canadian citizen. I'm living in America on a TN NAFTA visa, and uh, I keep having these little tiny moments of culture shock every now and again about various random things. It's just strange, like all sorts of stuff that you guys take for granted every day. Uh, what? Tell me about the most recent one. I'm curious. Uh, well, the most recent thing that I noticed was um, there was some garbage in between the tracks for the light rail, uh, and the specific character of the garbage that was there, like the shape and size of the cigarette packages that were in there, was different. It was not huh. what I was expecting to see, because oh. Canada has like different cigarette brands, like the shape of their cigarette boxes are different. This is, like, not something that I would really... I would ever think of, right? Jason, that, do you smoke? I don't. I don't, actually. <laughs> which is why it's not something I think of. Yeah. But, I was like, I don't think you smoke. This is very odd. <laughs> okay. 
I'll tell you what the litter in Canada would be like. It would be like Tim Hortons cups. <laughs> 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 or if there was going to be a cigarette package, it was going to be the shape of the cigarette packages that we see in, in Canada. And, which is, wow. yeah, they're they're rectangular, just like they are here, but it's yeah. like two rows of 24 cigarettes instead of three rows of 12 or whatever it is? I don't know. I don't know either. I'm I'm just sort of making up the numbers to give you a Well, an no, idea okay. Of what. Are, is the packaging covered in like um, horrible things like it is in I can't think of where, but like they have got pictures of like lungs that have been smokers lungs and like this will happen. Oh yes. They are <laughs> oh. definitely covered in those. Um, for a Perhaps. while there's uh, there was one that was uh, a limp cigarette that was saying that it would uh, it would cause impotence. It was just this the cigarette that was sort of like bent over. And it, oh, said that it would cause in, impotence in people. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I want one of those. I want one of the ones that says you know cancer. <laughs> we'll oh. give you a tumor. <laughs> Do you, there's got to be somebody who's like trying to collect the whole set. They're like, okay, I've got the one with the lung on it. I've got the one with like the bent cigarette, and now I need to get the one that has like. <laughs> And then I'll have the whole collection. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell everybody who's uh, who's in the Twitch chat, uh, since there's five-ish people that I can see, that uh -huh. I am not using glitches. I am not going to use the pause glitch specifically in Mega Man 1. This is a great glitch where you could, uh, you could shoot a bad guy and then pause the game. And the, like programmers, the programmers forgot to make the the hit invulnerability to have that last through the pause. And so if you paused while the monster was being hit, they would yeah. take more damage every time you unpaused from the same shot until it <sighs> explode and you could just cheat your way through the game that way. Uh, the in number one only. I'm going to tell you all about all the glitches in these games and how I'm not going to exploit any of them. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so the only the only tricks I'm using right now are unlimited lives using a Game Genie code. I am not using save states, and I am not glitching with the monster shoot glitches. Um, but what were we talking about before, uh, before I got to Cut Man? What were we talking about? Yeah. Speakers. Like, I'm just at Cut Man right now. You were talking about the speakers. drug code. Yeah, and, and while I'm talking about speakers, you know, Skepticon uh, will be live streamed, so if you can't make it to Springfield, you can watch the live stream all weekend, and then the speakers talks all go on YouTube after the event. So you, if you're interested in any of these speakers and what they have to say at the event, and you don't... You can't make plans to come out this November. Don't worry, we've got you covered. It'll be on YouTube later, <clears throat> and it'll also be on a live stream if you want to, like, I don't know, make a marathon weekend of it. <laughs> the only thing that won't be live streamed is the Godless Pervert Story Hour because it's uh, for adults only, and we can't exactly monitor that with a live stream. That makes sense. Yup! Okay, great. Back to the speakers. Uh, the next speaker... Uh, on our list is Carrie Poppy. She is a journalist, performer, and the co-host of Oh No, Ross and Carrie, the podcast, which is a show about fringe science, uh, spirituality, and claims of the paranormal. I think they recently did a big piece on Scientology that's super fascinating, and I highly recommend if you're into podcasts. I think I've seen that big piece about science. Big piece about Scientology. I'm not. Speaking. Yeah, like they've infiltrated the church and stuff. It's really cool stuff. Which they're not—they're not a small um, organization to take on, and no. they have a tendency of being extremely litigious. Yes, so, like taking on Scientology great. takes big brass ones, because like, oh wow, <laughs> oh wow. I just beat Cutman by throwing big rocks at him repeatedly. You know, you did it. Yep. That's—I'm <laughs> so proud. The way that the Mega Man <laughs> games work. Um, Every boss has a vulnerability to another boss's special weapon. When you beat a boss, you get that boss's special weapon. Oh. Um, it was a kind of neat paper, rock, scissors type thing where 
everybody has these like rotating vulnerabilities and I'm taking on the bosses in a recommended order um, not maybe the most popular orders in a lot of cases but at least okay. I'm, pi I'm taking them on in the order of their vulnerabilities I'm letting the audience know right now uh -huh. so next up because I just got the cut whatever cut boomerang or whatever they are I'm throwing yeah. scissors at a robot and the robot that I'm going to throw them at is going to be Elec Man. Ah, yes. Scissors. Robot's only weakness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Bullets! My weakness! How did you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> All right. Uh, Carrie will be talking about... Uh, well, her title... The title of her presentation for Skepticon this year is... Everyone's a skeptic. Why setting yourself apart as a critical thinker is a mistake. Huh. Oh. Oh, that's that's going to be good. Oh, that, that so has a good. lot of potential. Yes. Very excited to have Carrie and see what she has to say on stage. I mean, I'm excited about every speaker. I'm very... I don't like to play favorites. No, understandable. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are some high-class folks we're talking about. These are extremely great thinkers, generally, and... And good people. And All good the speakers people. who come to Skepticon, they do not take an honorarium. They basically volunteer their time and talent to come out and talk to us. We, I mean, Skepticon covers airfare or mileage if they're close enough to drive, and then we give them a hotel room for help. Hang with us. And maybe we, we get them some coffee yeah. and a sandwich, you know, and they come out and it, we couldn't be more grateful to everyone who comes to speak at Skepticon because I am very aware that it's not easy to do presentations at conferences or be at conferences because it's very draining. So we're, we're very appreciative to all these people. Yeah, this volunteering your time is not a small thing. Um, these are generally people who are professionals in their particular fields or they have a good deal of stock in intellectual circles and it's not small um no it's not small to, to volunteer to go to springfield ohio for free springfield ohio wherever the hell <laughs> springfield, springfield missouri you jerk missouri <laughs> I don't know. There's like eight Springfields. I don't know your there, American geography. Okay, there so. are like a million Springfields, but whatever. And which one it's are the Simpsons in? Do we know? I don't. I don't know personally, but I think they think it's Illinois, right? I guess I don't know. That makes sense. Sure. Um, I. I'm I, trying to. I'm trying to do something really quickly right right now. Um, oh, okay. So you should concentrate on that. Yeah. Give me a second. Okay. Do I have to wait for you? I'm no, no, no. Keep going. Keep talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm getting a warning, but okay. Cool. Um, the next um, speaker, we're going to have a... This one's a returning speaker. We're going to have Greta Christina back on the stage. You know, last year we had all new speakers, which was super fun, but we kind of missed having some of our staple, like our key, I guess I would say key players, but it's like some of our returning friendly faces on stage because we think they especially Greta bring a little something of Skepticon there's a lot of mutual love here between Skepticon and Greta and so she'll be joining us this year, she'll be talking about practices, practicing atheism in everyday life okay uh, yeah. and I think that coincides with uh, a new book she's written which, of course, I don't remember the name of now because I'm a horrible host and friend and Skepticon lady. So Dear The Way of the Heathen would be her most oh. recent book. Great, I'm glad you remember. <laughs> and I know this because I have it on audiobook and it's an excellent book. Um, okay. I would strongly recommend it as something that any person who no longer believes in God and who thinks that you know, there should be something more there as far as where you find getting your moral code. The way that he even talks about where people like us who have strong moral centers but are not uh, religious at all, where we get our morality. Uh, and honestly, it's the same place that non heathens get their morality. It's from 
societal contracts and wanting to be good for other people's sake because, you know, you want people to be good to you for your own sake. Um, morality doesn't spring from some wellspring of goodness. It comes from the social contract. And that, I'm, I'm spoiling everybody on what the book is. You really are! Shut up! <laughs> but uh, it, it's well worth a read. I think that everybody should, uh, should get a hold of it and read it whenever they can. Yeah, and uh, she blogs at Greta Christina's blog at The Orbit, and she's on Facebook and Twitter. And so those, those are the places you can find her and her work. I highly, highly, highly recommend her blog or her books because it's so... Oh, like she just says all the things in very she she is good with the words clearly she's, i am not so she is good with the words which is great because somebody has to be i know right oh my goodness i almost wanted to say thank god for greta christina but we all know that that's just it makes <clears throat> that's anyway. just you being silly come on it is lol i'm an atheist ah. <laughs> It's okay to say these things as atheists because, you know, nobody's going to get angry at us or anything. Of course not. That would be silly. Yeah. Why would anybody? Come on. We're, we're such sweet and kind and caring people. Well, one of us is. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not me. <laughs> I was referring to myself, but okay. Well, okay, good. Because it's not me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right, right. Like, thanks for stepping on the joke, Lauren. <laughs> this is how awful you are. You're gonna... Like, the one joke I get to say about myself. The one self-deprecating humor. I, I'm not going to allow that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I love this. This is the part where the blocks appear and disappear and you have to jump on them. I love oh, this. Oh. Wait, are you being sarcastic or not? A little... Okay, because it's early, not early, it's like, what, 10.45 central in the morning, which is early on a Sunday, gosh darn it. Like, I was up before this to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, good on you for doing it. I, Just I am appreciative. Oh, man, I am appreciative that you are going to make your butt numb playing Mega Man for 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, it's a lot of sitting. It is. Uh, I, I'm probably going to have to get up and stretch at some point or another. Highly recommend it's... that. It's just going to happen, so... That's smart! <laughs> All right. uh, also, on the last... Dr. Raff. Now, I want to, like... I'm going to read her credentials, because otherwise I'm just totally going to fuck it up. Say her name again. Jennifer Raff. Okay. A-F-F. -F. She is an assistant professor of physical anthropology at the University of Kansas, so she's pretty close to us in Springfield, Missouri. But what's really impressive is that she has a dual PhD in molecular, cellular, and developmental biology and anthropology. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. I know, right? <sighs> and meanwhile, I just fell down like five screens. So I've gotta... I said that because I knew you were failing at a video game. Yeah, nice. so... <laughs> Molecular biologist, that's really cool. Hey, I'm dying in Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> Look how I spend my time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's who's doing well by themselves? Who's who's got the the better life here? <laughs> Hells yeah. <laughs> And uh, she's going to be talking about the misuse of genetics in pseudoscience. Oh boy, that's oh. a big topic. It is a big topic, and like, but who could be more qualified for this? It's going to be so good. I have a puppy who is demanding attention. Mm. Hello, puppy. Oh, puppies. I've got one. Yeah, one's lying down on the floor behind me. Aww. Yeah, I can't well, I'm play the game right now because the puppy's head is in my well, that's, like, way more important than this video game right now. Let's get real. Yeah. Yeah. Aw, pupper. This is a husky. Her name is Freya. Isn't that right? <laughs> yes. I can't see sure anything that's going on. All I can do is see this... Nothing. <laughs> 
I learned um, through following Jennifer on Twitter that she's really into breakout rooms. Well, like, so room. into... Th you don't know what those are? Mm -mm. They're, uh, like, puzzle rooms where... They're really popular these days. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. Uh, it's like you go and you pay money to be locked in a room where there's logic puzzles and so on and so forth to get yourself out of the room. Oh my god, that would be amazing. I want to do that. Yeah, she's really, really into them. Okay, cool. Fingers crossed. We think we're going to have a version of a breakout room at Skepticon at the game night on Friday. Oh, so. I, am, I am in on that. <laughs> I am all over that shit. Yeah, I don't want to brag, but my mom's doing it, so like, really uh, proud of you, mom. <laughs> way to go. Way to go, Lauren, mom. <laughs> Lauren's mom's name is Cindy. Cindy, and mom. Cindy, name is yeah. Cindy, mom. Nailed it. That's her name. I assume so. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to have a breakout room during the, uh, the tabletop gaming night. Oh, and I should say, you know, we're having tabletop gaming night on Friday night. There will be a prom on Saturday night, but coinciding with prom, we're going to have an area set aside with more tables and chairs in the main space. So if dancing and music and that is not your thing and you just want to play more games or just hang out, there will be a space on Saturday night to do that. That's basically like a, a quiet room for people who want a chance to Yeah, I mean... Quiet. We're offering more than one kind of social engagement. So, if, you know, if loud party music dancing is not your thing, well, there's, you know, there's the quieter game uh, one in the other. Froze. <laughs> you froze again. I froze? Yeah, what's going on? I, 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 don't, I don't know. Everything seems fine on my end. I mean, I can hear you great. I can hear myself great. I can see myself. I so, look know, good for a Sunday good. morning. I can see myself, so that's all that matters. <laughs> I mean, kind of. <sighs> <laughs> uh, the preening works for you. Does it? No. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm awful, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna hang up now, good luck. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'll keep raising funds for you. Hey, uh, everybody, if you want to... Uh, donate to Skepticon. It would be really, really cool if you did that. And you yeah. can do that on Skepticon.org. Um, I'll be playing Mega Man all day. Uh, we know of at least one person who has offered, uh, what is it, $25 per game that I beat today, which Alex. is pretty awesome. Thank Alex. you, Alex. Alex, you rule. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to make all six of the Nintendo games today. But we'll see how that works because we are 40, 48 minutes in and I'm only about halfway done one of them. So. Ooh. Oh, Jason. Oh, uh, it's <laughs> going to be a rough slog. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> You'll find your stride, right? Like, you're just getting warmed up now. Right. You know, you're not even an hour in, so anything can happen. And plus, this is like the first iteration of this game engine. And so, while you can see a lot of the stuff really hasn't changed over the years, at the same time, there's a lot that really has. Um, right. Like, I can't slide or charge my buster. Uh, I'm playing basically with the bare bones of powers, and this is the very first iteration of this game. It wasn't as long. It has a point meter, which is strange. I don't know why anybody cares about points. It was supposed to be sort of arcadey, I guess. I don't know. And I just died. You know what? I think the last two deaths I haven't actually counted on my death meter. Oh! Put another one in there. Oh! oh I'm doing ho awful. Awful. Uh, That's the spirit. 18 deaths so far. Uh, this game is really hard. Uh, under ordinary circumstances, I would have to continue at some point, but I've been neglecting to do that by setting up uh, unlimited lives on each of the games. Um, like I've said a few times so far in the stream, that's the only cheat that I'm really using. You have a banana. I'm getting peckish. I was getting peckish. I don't know about you. 
to make things clear, she is probably dancing to Beyonce, not the music of the stream, because she can't actually hear it. I'm hoping that everybody in chat, that you can hear the game okay. I'm hoping you can hear both of us okay. Jim Tigwell, Charge My Buster is my electronica band that only plays Bob Seeger remixes. That's a good one. That's a great <laughs> joke. Jim Tigwell is actually um, uh, a pretty cool guy. He does uh, ethics, uh, meta-ethics, and we were on a robots versus humans in the solar system panel together on uh, at Skepticon, not Skepticon, sorry, at uh, Convergence um, this, this year. It was a, a pretty good panel. It ended up on Science for the People, um, Desiree Shell's uh, science podcast slash radio show. Um, so I'm, I'm on official Canadian content. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty <laughs> proud of myself, too. Good. At some point, I promised to uh, talk about the ethics of creating sentient robots to fight each other because that's what the Mega Man game is. I was going to say because that's what Mega Man is essentially. Yep. It's robots yep. fighting each other. Indeed. Indeed it is. While we were setting up yesterday, I surprised Lauren with the fact that Mega Man does in fact have a plot. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> Like Jason got up to leave and go check the live stream in a different computer in the house, and I was I was reading the plot. I didn't know there was one. It was a very. I mean, I I had no idea. I did not know. <laughs> so the plot of the Mega Man games is something along the lines of there are two robot creators, Doctor Light and Doctor Wily. And Dr. Light created the vast majority of the good robots, and Dr. Wily created the bad ones. Um, it's not quite exactly like that, but at one point, I guess, Light and Wily were colleagues working on AI together. And then, this is sort of like the Martin Shkreli... What's the name of that guy that, that's doing the VR? That awful, awful person that's doing VR and funding Trump? He created the Oculus Rift. I have no idea. No? Okay. No, I don't know. This is I'm thing that Googling just came it. Out. Yeah, Google it. Let's talk about that. Oh, God, yeah, that's the most interesting. Well, I mean, it's kind of interesting okay. that the guy who created the Oculus Rift is spending all of his money funding the 4chan trolls and the shit posters who are supporting Trump through this election. That is kind of interesting when you get right down to it, right? Kind of. I'm just, I'm really stuck on this picture of him that popped up on Google where it's like, it almost looks like a clothing ad for Old Navy because the background's like really blue and he's wearing a red jacket with a blue shirt and his hair is kind of like coiffed like a frat bro. So I'm like, That's this is an I... advertisement for a jacket. I'm sure of it, but no, it's like his headshot. That's, that's roughly what I think of him. That's why a lot of people have been comparing him to Martin Shkreli lately. He's kind of that tech douche bro, right? He looks it. So I just beat Alec Man. Great. So now there's Ice Man, and then Fire Man. You know, Fire Man, his, his special power is uh, being hot and sweaty and muscular. These names are all super original. I love oh, it. Right. I know. Just wait until you get to the next game, because they wanted to do the, the one guy's ice powers and one guy's fire powers, and then they start to really stretch it over time. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting, like, uh, for the water guy in one of the later games, it's Spout Man. Spout. Oh. He looks like a big, like one of those pumps that you pump the, the water from. Someone got out their thesaurus and was like, all right, we need another name. <laughs> we need something else for water. Spout, yeah. perfect. Put that, it in. That's pretty much exactly how it goes later. Yeah. Wow. Ah, uh, good times, good times. Such good times. All right, and another speaker we have coming to Skepticon this year is Benny Vimes. I like Benny. Benny's cool. Do you should know Benny. Benny is a blogger on the Orbert. Or Orbert? God, words. Orbert. Bit. <laughs> 
Orbert. Dark. Yeah, their blog is Scrappy Deviations, and they're a um, a proud social justice cleric, which I think is really <laughs> just a great term. Well, I mean, we're we we can't all be warriors, right? You need a well balanced party. Exactly. You know, if, if you're gonna have a very successful raid, right? Is that the term? Oh my god, I don't even know. Campaign. Campaign, sure. D and D is another one of those things that I wasn't allowed to play because I was the little sister. So, huh. yeah, my childhood was so hard, Jason. Ugh. <laughs> oh, boo hoo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being mean for no reason. <laughs> oh, I'm getting my ass handed to me. You're being mean because you're getting your ass handed to you, is what's happening. Yeah, it's displacement. I'm just displacing my rage. Oh, great. <laughs> 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 oh, good. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Benny's presentation is titled "Maybe He's Born with It." Maybe it's testosterone cypionate. I don't know. Cypionates? Cypionates? <laughs> I ruined it. I, I ruined know. the joke, Benny. I'm so sorry. You ruined it. C y p i o n a t. However you say this word, I I don't know. But oh. Benny is trans and is going to be talking about um, an introduction to medical transition. Okay. So if you've ever wondered about the process, uh, about tr uh, transitioning as a transgender individual, uh, Benny's going to be covering the medical and surgical options and as well as how people decide what is best for them making those decisions. So if you're interested in any of that, this is the talk for you. That sounds good. Yep. Uh, and this came about because there was a you know what? I'm not gonna mess around with this and die over and over again. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna fix things for myself. Okay, perfect. <laughs> oh. Yeah, <and> this, <clears throat> this kind of inspired. Uh, by last year, you know, we had Fallon Fox, who is a trans MMA fighter, on stage, and someone asked a rather rude question about her body. Mm -hmm. And, um,. That I think it's the reason why Benny wants to give this talk here is to avoid or to help stave any of those <clears throat> awkward questions happening ever again in the future, which is admirable. Yeah, I I think absolutely admirable. Uh, it's better to inform people than to let them wallow in their ignorance. That is kind of yeah. the modus operandi of, of Skepticon is trying to keep people people from wallowing in ignorance generally so well <laughs> yeah i mean skepticon we're called such and not like atheist con because yeah a lot of us are atheists but skeptics and skepticism is the lens we use to view the world in its entirety and that means more than just religion it means all different kinds of topics and and i mean this is one of one of them that people are interested in and want to know more about and are pretty ignorant on so might as well dive in How are you doing? Are you dying? I am at another disappearing and reappearing block puzzle, so I'll be here for a while. <laughs> cool! <laughs> this game is rife with these. There's um, blocks that appear at certain times, and you have to recognize the pattern and learn how to jump from block to block as the other one is disappearing underneath you. Like I said, this game is Nintendo hard, which is... A euphemism which generally means uh, we're going to make things as difficult as humanly possible for you while still being allowed to be called a game. They How don't want you to... This, for you? this is pretty horrible. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. like, Top ten worst things that I've had to do for uh, my love of skepticism. Really? This makes the top ten? <laughs> right? <laughs> you wouldn't think, but here we are. You know what? You agreed to do this, so I'm not going to feel bad for you. No, you shouldn't. I, I don't. I did this to myself. You really did. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, this next speaker, I, f I found about... I found out about words. I found out about her and her work at uh, a bookstore I work at. I was organizing the science section because, I mean, that's the, the section I want to be in. And... Um, I found her book. It's called Scream. Oh, yes. Chilling Adventures in the Science of Fear. And uh, it's 
Oh, such a good read. I've, I've started it, and uh, I'm not too far in, but uh, Margie, or Margie, Margie Kerr, Dr. Margie Kerr, she has a PhD in sociology from the University of Pittsburgh, where she teaches and conducts research on fear with a focus on the how and why people engage with frightening or thrilling materials and activities. So we're talking roller coasters, uh, scary movies, haunted houses, uh like hang gliding any kind of like extreme sport like she she's conducting i think it's one of the first ever if not the first ever uh research on this kind of uh thrill-seeking behaviors okay yeah oh, it's that let me see fun. co-investigator of investigator of the first of its kind study measuring fear in the real world by collecting psychophysiology data measuring how the brain and body respond in real life threatening situations there you go and at at skepticon she'll be talking about uh ghosts Ooh, ghosts yeah Ooh. Scary. <laughs> oh, oh. Scary. Oh. oh yes the title of her talk is surrounded <clears throat> surrounded by ghosts the science of sensed presence I can't oh, wait. I kind of want to know what what that that's about. Okay. Sensed presence. Well, you spoil us a little. I have a description I could read you that will tell you a little bit more. Sure. The the presentation she's giving will cover environmental, social, psychological, and biological factors which contribute to individuals reporting a sensed presence, meaning they think they've had an encounter with a ghost or paranormal activity, if you will. Okay. So she's going to cover the science of fight or flight, the power of place, and the things in our world that like send chills down your spine to make you feel that otherworldly presence. So basically a bunch of... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> essentially. I can't wait for this talk to be on YouTube so I can just send it to everyone who's ever been like, I definitely think my house is haunted. I just keep hearing things. <laughs> oh my god. No, you don't! Oh my goodness, I'm very scared. Uh... Uh, a ghost appears to have made my pants wet. <laughs> oh, it's very spooky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel a presence because I'm freaking myself out in the house alone at night. You know? <laughs> that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, and, and Margie uh, has had one of, like, the best reactions to my cold email I send to speakers to try to get them to come to Skype. What? This exists? You guys were conference is amazing. I can't wait. Yeah. Like, she's so so excited to meet everybody and hang out. Well that's awesome. I can't wait to meet her. Yeah, I mean I am gonna get to meet them all, right? Like well, you're not just gonna hold me at arm's length. You I you play Mega I, Man over there. <laughs> it depends on how well you do with your video games today, honestly. Like if you totally fuck this up, then no. No, you okay. can't come. <laughs> okay, well, now I have incentive. All right, yeah. finally, God. I know, like, <laughs> if Alex is, like, $25 a game wasn't like, intensive enough, you can't come to Skepticon unless you beat all those games. Oh. Harsh. I'm kidding. You can come anyway. You can come anyway. I'm oh, kidding. thank goodness. Yes. Now, I, I demand that you show up. The more, cool. the merrier. I think I might show up. Maybe. I hope okay. you do. Considering I'm going to be at least a couple of the speakers' drives, um, I probably should make an effort, huh? Oh my god, yeah. Um, uh, please, and thank you. Oof. I am barely escaping certain death right now. Oof. Alright. Aw. Did you make it? Barely. Good. But a win is a win. I really wish that you were grooving out to the Mega Man music instead of, you know, Beyonce or whatever. Beyonce or whatever. Listen, don't be dismissive of my ch music choices. No, no I mean, I'm, I'm totally down with that, except for, you know... I, I I've moved on metal. to Scissor Sisters. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like Scissor Sisters. Uh, nice disco vibe to them. Like we, are. we are at Iceman. Iceman. 
Isn't that an X-Men character? Codename Iceman. Yeah, actually, Iceman is, in fact, an X-Men character. Oh my god, I beat him and then died! <laughs> you beat him and then died? And then died. Oh, wow. Awesome. I thought I had that guy in the bag, and then... And no. then one of his yeah. shots just just exploded me. <laughs> exploded my head. It's great. You're doing great. I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. You're the best. All right. <laughs> Never gonna something keep you down. Yeah, something something keep you down. Yep. That's right, right? That's those are the lyrics. Never gonna something something with the whatever. I mean, the, yeah, that sounds correct. <laughs> yeah, Jim Jim Tigwell mentions that one of the bosses in one of yeah. the very later games is a mandrill. <laughs> Instead man. of being cut man or guts man or like man, this guy is spark mandrill. And he's he's literally a mandrill. <laughs> he's a robotic mandrill who happens to throw yeah, sparks. Yeah. I think I remember like I I can visualize exactly what he looks like. Yeah, the Go Google them. One of the X-Men... Uh, not X-Men. Mega Man X games. Yep. Yep. Hmm. So I'm about to go and take on Fireman. Cool. So I can get ab power. Fire! Oh, I didn't even... I was at a Man, and I didn't even make the danger, danger, high voltage. Danger, danger, Sucks high to voltage. suck, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> does kind of suck to suck, doesn't it? It uh, does. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd have to trust you on that. Um, you know, oh, I, I have to, come on. I'm afraid that um, I have to. I have to assume that. You, you have empirical knowledge of how it sucks to suck. Um, I, I am a skeptic after all. Are... If you're trying to burn me, you're doing a piss poor job because it's not working. Yeah. It worked better the first time I made that exact joke to you, though. <laughs> I think you're beating a dead horse at this point. Just let it go. Probably should. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, my heart. Oh, my heart can't take this. Oh. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, all right. I'm good. It's all good. It's all good. Uh huh. We're all good. Here. Cause that's definitely what it sounds like. Everything's just way okay. Yeah. There's just these pillars of fire that are spouting up from the ground. Oh, they're just pillars of fire. You can do this, honestly. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing. The next speaker I want to talk about for Skepticon is a ninja minister. Ninja minister? Holy crap, that sounds awesome. <laughs> it's Jerry DeWitt. Jerry DeWitt. Yeah. I know who that is now. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry has a, I want to say black belt. And I was talking to him at Logicon this past year and a balisong knife, also known as a butterfly knife. Okay. He knows like all of these really really wicked awesome tricks wicked awesome yeah he sent me a video of like his hand like flipping around this knife and like oh my god i am bringing my practice ballast song that's dull because your sorry your practice ballast song that, that is dull yeah they make practice ones that don't have a sharp edge so that you can practice tricks and not like cut the crap out of yourself okay that sounds awesome yeah. Let's, let's cut the crap out of ourselves on stage. Really bleed no, it's a, for skepticism. It's a, I'm bringing the practice one so we don't cut the crap out of ourselves. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to have to, like... Our speaker's going to have to sign uh, waivers? Non-harm waivers or whatever? Jerry's the only one who's going to be doing these tricks, and he's a trained professional, so I feel pretty good about it. Okay. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Now, Jerry would be very upset with me if I didn't mention that he had a book. I think I think he brings it up every time I talk to him. <laughs> every time. Yeah. Well, you know, for the, whenever I first met him, 
I think the book had just come out and he kept bringing it up every time I talked to him. And I was like, Jerry, we every time we chat, you bring up Stan, but I know, I know. <laughs> and it's called Hope After After Faith. So if any of you are interested in Jerry DeWitt's book, you that's better what be. it's titled. <laughs> and man, I know that title by heart because he talks about it every time we chat. Oh, but the, is it a good book, though, is the real question. Now, this is the part where I tell you I've never read it, and I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> now you owe it to him. You just slagged him what? on camera. <laughs> oh, he can handle it. He's a big boy. He's fine, right? He knows <laughs> I, I give him crap about his book all the time. It's just, it's our shtick. Okay. He says, Lauren, hey, did you know I, did you know I have a book? And I go, yes, I know. Stop. <laughs> and so on and so forth. <laughs> Wow, you're a supportive yeah. friend. <laughs> Good. Uh, it's our friendship dynamic. It works out. <laughs> yeah, you know, you've got those friends where like you just rib each other endlessly. You know. I don't know anybody who's live who, stream. I don't. I don't know anybody who who I rip constantly or slag or. Right, no. totally. I yeah. Don't, I don't know anybody like that. That's You can't think of one. Not not Great. a single soul. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you for doing this live stream with me, you awful human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. I could be doing like literally anything else right now. <laughs> literally anything else. <laughs> That's not true. I have no life. <laughs> 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 That's also true. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, no you don't have a convention to plan or run or anything. No, oh, I mean, oh god, we're like 50 days away. There's a countdown on the website, and every time I like, oh, I gotta go do this on the website, and I see the countdown, and I just like full body like, <gasps> <laughs> so much to get done before. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> that's epic. Yeah. Um, like so I I beat uh, Fireman pretty quickly. Excellent. Yeah. Good work. I'm at Dr. Willie. Sorry, Wiley. Dr. Willie. There's very poor translations between many of the games. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Light, Dr. Wright, Dr. Wright, W R. Uh, Dr. Wiley, Dr. Willie. Uh, it's actually Dr. Light and Dr. Wiley. I'm about to go and fight Dr. Wiley now, whose clear points is 200,000, and nobody gives a damn about clear points. Alright. He's gonna waggle his eyebrows like he does. Like a wily do. I heard that's what wily people do. Yeah. Think of him like wily e. coyote. I mean, that's the, that's the first thing I think of when you say wily. Is wily coyote. That's good, because he's pretty much like that. With acne. Uh, everything. He's, you know, ineffectual at stopping Mega Man... Uh, Every single time. It's important that we you know, establish all of these priors. So that oh we yes, know what we're, very important. <laughs> so that you know what I'm up against. Mm. All right. I would also like to mention Jerry's podcast. Uh, he co-hosts a Hope After Faith the podcast okay. with Bobby C. I don't know who Bobby C is, but that's I mean Bobby C. He and Jerry. Jerry and Bobby. Making a podcast. Good times. Yeah. Jerry has a delightful speaking voice, so I can only imagine that this podcast is off the chain. <laughs> off the chain. As the off the say. chain, as the cool kids say these days, because I am indeed a cool kid. I'm not. I know that. <laughs> Jerry's presentation is called How Non-Believers Can Still Help Save the World. If it's not too late, all right. Yeah, Very it's probably too late. Yeah, you know. Maybe. I told him no pressure, but he really had to make this presentation amazing. He really has to save the world. Uh, you know, yeah. way to set the expectations right from the get-go. You know, I at, at Skepticon, we demand the best. And that's what we want, and that's what we're going to get. <laughs> wow. Yep. <laughs> That's not true. I mean, it is true, but it's also not. <laughs> mm. 
You giggling at you or me? Both. Like, I'm having problems with one particular part in Wiley's castle, and at the same time, I'm laughing at the fact that, you know, here I am, doing this thing, and there you are, talking about saving the world, and I'm playing Mega Man. Good times. Well, nice. you're doing your part. One boss at a time. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. All right. Another speaker who will be joining us this year at Skepticon is Bria Crutchfield. Ooh, she's cool. I like her. She is super cool. She founded Minority Atheists of... Michigan and the Detroit affiliate of Black Nonbelievers in 2013. And she was raised, baptized, and defellowshipped in the Jehovah's Witness faith, which, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Intense. Kind of. Like yeah. camping. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. She did a totally badass project in, um, what? In 20, yeah, this year, where she raised a hell of a lot of money for Flint, Michigan because of the water crisis that is there and still remains today, BT dubs that has not gone away I think she had to, like she got a bunch of water donated and she had to what, like rent a ton of trucks to take it up over somewhere to Flint Yeah, let me just say a thing or two about that Please Oh, uh, let's not because uh, okay. the only words that I really have are angry Expletives, great yeah. Like, Governor Walker needs to get his shit together. Uh-huh. Basically, Bria is, um, cool as hell. Does amazing projects. We're so excited to have her on stage this year. And she will be talking on secular burnout. Walking away from the secular community guilt-free. Oh my. Wow. Um, that's not timely or anything. <laughs> no! Right? Uh, <laughs> I, I, not to say that I'm particularly burning out right now, but you know, there's always a thing or two that I wish was a little less awful. There is no doubt that the secular movement, or any movement, has a lot of difficulty being a part of it. Um, and sometimes you just need to take a break. Or a permanent one. But Ed, she's going to be giving this talk. The description is making the right decision for your life when devotion to the secular community no longer suffices. It's, a t it's going to be a tougher talk, I guess, to hear because no one likes... Well, at least I don't like to admit that burnout has ever happened because um, <laughs> I, you know, hate to show weakness. I'm sure a lot of people hate to show weakness or like that we're getting tired or burnt out or... So on and so forth. So I'm looking forward to this talk, but I'm also not looking forward to it because I do slash do not want to hear what she has to say. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. I'm... This is a tough topic, and there are things that we need to talk about. Um, you can't, you don't have an infinite stamina. But I like to think I do. You sure do. I don't yell at you for that or at all. Oof. I like. To... I just died. <laughs> <Cool. laughs> what? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I said I like to pretend that just I'm an actual robot. Yeah, you're a robot. Sure. Yeah, you don't. Uh, you don't experience any of the hardships or. No. Your, your no, human I... emotions are weakness. They are, and they're, you know, not helpful. All of the time. <laughs> I feel All like I hear I is, be... like, yeah, I mean, I think, you could maybe so. not be playing this game. You could just be, like, clicking your mouse. I wouldn't know. Oh, uh, you know what? What? I'm not going to get through this boss. <laughs> what? No, you have to. So, there is a cheat that you can use here. I told you about it a while ago, where you pause the game and then it it does a whole lot of damage. Are you gonna? Do you think do I should do that? 
Do you think I should do that? Do you think that's actually cheating to a point Don't where- Don't drag me into this! Oh my god! You have to be my moral arbiter. You tell I, me what's cheating This what is isn't. a responsibility I refuse to take on. I refuse. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm -mm. Oh. Oh, hell. Uh, <laughs> this is sucking. Uh, uh, and I'm doing it to myself, too. If I'd actually learned the pattern, there's a yeah. set pattern that he d deconstructs himself and moves from one side of the screen to the other. Um, and every part that flies across the screen can hurt you. And there's oh, a set wow. pattern that you could uh, you could determine and then figure out and then make your way through. Um, you could like jump over and duck under things. Uh, this game you can't slide, so you can't actually duck under the ones that are head height. This is difficult. That I sounds. Uh, I could do this a hundred, hundred thousand times, or I could cheat my way through right now. But it sounds so easy, Jason. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Do what you gotta do. All right, there's twenty five dollars per game on the line. That's true, but I don't want to pickpocket it. Ugh. I've got to be an awesome gamer. Is what I've got to do. I'm gonna try this one more time, legit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm gonna fail mode. Oh, I'm already second. That is the kind of attitude we like to have. <laughs> I missed him completely. <laughs> awesome. Ah, uh, I died. Okay. Now I cheat. <sighs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, a, uh, I'll talk about our next speaker. Sure. Have on the lineup. Our 10th, 10 out of 12. We're almost through everybody, but hey, okay, here we go. All right, Victor Harris. Victor Harris. Tell us about yes. Victor Harris. He is a poet. He's been writing and performing atheist, skeptical, rational science-themed poetry since 2007. Ooh. And wow. Yeah, so a long while, and he's like won all kinds of fancy awards for his uh, slam poetry and his writing. Like, Victor's pretty legit. Sorry, I just cheated my way through the dude. <laughs> How dare you! I know. Okay, let's uh, handicap myself and give myself like five deaths. That's fine. Sure. Let's pretend that I died five times there. You died more than five times, didn't you? Let's pretend that that would have taken half an hour and I would have died a hundred times. What? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, go than, on. No. You were talking about your last Yeah. Speaker. Other than being a really badass poet, Victor apparently bakes amazing cheesecakes and is bringing some to Skepticon. Ooh, I like cheesecake. Yeah. I, uh... I mean, I don't want to say that I could be bribed by, by food. I totally but can. If the speaker is bringing cheesecakes, they're high on my list. They're high on my list of priorities. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I have... And then his cheesecakes have won awards. Like, his poetry has won awards. His cheeks, cheesecakes have won awards. But is he a good speaker, though? Unstoppable. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume yes. One, because I know that to be true. And two, well, they, um... He performed at Reason Rally this past year. Okay. Yeah. What um, what topic is he going to be speaking about? Cheesecakes? Nailed it. Thought so. <laughs> no, uh, the, po the title of the presentation is Poetry for Skeptics, and it's just poetry based in science and skepticism, highlighting the folly of Christianity and the beauty of a scientific understanding of the natural world. Cool. Yeah. Sounds and on fun. top... Yeah, it's going to be, you know a different presentation from what I guess we're all used to at these kind of conventions, but that's something Skepticon strives to do, is to host different kinds of presentations. Like, the world is very large and varied, and we, we would like to represent that as best we can in our conference. Hey, guess what? Victor. I'm 
refighting a boss. I'm shocked. It's shocking news. Guess what else? What? I don't have the weapon that he's supposed to be able to be vulnerable against. How? Oh, good. <laughs> you don't need it, right? Nah. No, I don't. I was just fighting Cutman again, um, mm -hmm. who is vulnerable to having rocks thrown at him. Yeah. And there are no rocks in the room. Um, hmm. That's awesome. Sweet. So I was using fire against him because he's actually also vulnerable against fire, it looks like. But I'm going to run out of ammo on that pretty quick. Oh, this is going to be fine. Totally. But I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to Victor's poetry. Um, I, I'm also very much looking forward to it. While I am a computer guy, uh, I actually went to school uh, for English, um, and uh, See how see how well I speak English right now? Yeah, uh, you're really convincing me that you have an English degree because your words. Right. The My words, words are pretty pretty good. The words are good. No, it's funny you mention that because you know Skepticon was started by and large by a bunch of arts students. You know, JT was pursuing an opera, like a music vocal opera degree, and I have, well now I have my MFA, but at the time I was pursuing a degree in drawing. So while skepticism, like the first thing you think about is science and like the hard sciences, uh, Skepticon, this conference was started by art nerds. Cool. Um, I like the idea of the humanities um, being as important or even more important in some cases, um, considering that, sorry, I, I should, pause for a second if I'm going to try to put together a coherent thought. I like the idea of people with humanities degrees um, being treated as having as valuable of things to say about humanity as people with hard science degrees. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the idea that the humanities are somehow a lesser subject, considering mm -hmm. that human beings as a social entity, I mean... We're all social creatures, right? Like, yes. No, I agree with you entirely. To each other. Oh my god, what? I mean, barely. I'm talking to my computer. I don't know who this voice is on the other side. <laughs> what voice? My computer is Canadian. I didn't know that. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Canadians, God. Ruin everything. You're America's hat. Deal with it. Oh. Ah, uh, my pride. <laughs> America is Canada's pants. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I agree that the humanities are just as important. And, and while... I don't know, I can't words. I don't have an English degree. I went to school for art twice. <laughs> <laughs> twice? Yeah. Why twice? Yeah. Well, I went back to get my master's. Oh, okay. Yep, it's so. not like you just decided to have the same degree again. <laughs> no, that's uh, no. <laughs> no, I got my BFA uh, in drawing, and then I, I decided to pursue my Master's of Fine Arts in Interdisciplinary Studio, which Ooh. is like the, a fancy way of saying art stuff. Art stuff. Yeah you, could, yeah, you could pick whatever medium is what we call it in the art world, like a uh, paint, drawing, uh, sculpture, etc. You could pick any or combine them however you wanted to make the work you wanted, which is why that program particularly appealed to me because I didn't want to have to do one thing because with the BFA you had to choose an avenue like ceramics, dra drawing, painting, uh, fiber, metals. Okay. In the masters you could combine or focus on one as you wished. But enough about me, back to Victor. Victor is going to be DJing our prom on Saturday night. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah. So, did you actually talk about prom yet? Did... I've mentioned it a few times. I, I I know that Rebecca will be on with you later today to talk about prom because it's her baby and I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> it, it's, give, it is. You don't want to give away Rebecca's baby. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, that sounds bad. But it, it's by and large her project. Uh, I will say that prom was started a couple years ago because Ben Blanchard and Hina Dadaboy tagged me in a Facebook status about having a skeptic atheist prom. And they were like, who do we know that can make this happen? Lauren, <laughs> you can make this happen. They were right. They uh, were right, yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of the things with Skepticon that have been added to our schedule or that we do are just suggestions that people throw our way, like having the prom, like... We didn't come up with that ourselves. Someone asked us to do it and gave us the idea, and then we made it happen. And so, you know, suggestions, if anyone has any suggestions on improvements for Skepticon, any criticisms, you know, we we do take them all into account to make the best conference possible for the people who are coming, because by and large, that's... Because by and large, I'm sorry. We're doing something wrong. Oh, by and large, we're making Skepticon, this conference for all of you and if you don't like it then we're doing something wrong and you know we're not listening to what your wants and needs are and clearly our wants and needs are that we cheesecake. have a problem and cheesecake and poetry yeah you know, I'm and i'm down with that i i like all of those things <laughs> yeah these are all good things all good things but, and then like the food trucks like so many things so food many trucks things are pretty cool I like the, um, the pasties truck every year. The they... British Invasion or whatever it's called. What is it called? Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the London Pasty Company. London Pasty Company. Yeah. Not pasties. That's a different thing altogether. Yes. Do, those are not... They're, they're, not, they're not for food. Jokes. They're not the same thing. They're not for pasties food. Pasties are different. Pasties are a delicious food. Poor Pupper is upset that Mom is gone. What have you done with Mom, Jason? Uh, I don't know. She went out. She has a car. It's fine. Everything's fine. I didn't murder her or anything. Jeez. Why would you even suggest that? That's awful. I love my wife. I'm glad. I love my puppy. Puppy. Uh, right now I'm grinding for uh, weapon energy in front of Wily Stage 2, where... I have to fight all of the robot bosses again. The robot masters, they call themselves. And the puppy is really insistent that I pay attention to her. Well, I mean, I think the puppy may be more important than video games. Maybe, but how are we going to make these sweet, sweet dollar bills, yo? I've got to beat this game so that we at least get $25 from, from uh, Alex. Alex? Is it? Yeah, it's Alex. And there he is in the chat channel. Hello, oh Alex. yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, I don't Alex. Know how long he's been here? But uh, oh my god. Well, um, hello for the first time that I knew you were here, listening and watching. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so he's probably heard you effusively thanking him for. I for hope his so. Potential donation, depending on if I ever get through this game. Listen, I, like I said, no pressure, but also a lot of pressure. Right. Twenty-five dollars a game, Jason. I'll make it happen. <laughs> good. Very good, yes. All right, our next speaker is also a returning speaker for Skepticon, uh, Rebecca Watson. Well, tell me about her. I think everyone knows about her, right? Yeah, but you have to, you have to actually talk about these people. Ah. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Rebecca is the founder of the Skeptic Network. It's a collection of sites focused on science and critical thinking. And um, she's also written for like Slate, Popular Science, and the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. She's hosted Quizotron, which is a rowdy live quiz show that pits scientists against comedians. And she, you know, travels around giving talks about various topics. She has an asteroid named after her, which is pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I have to, that's on my bucket list. Is it? Yeah. Having an asteroid named after you. I mean, <laughs> even just having an ass named after me would be okay. I mean, if... Technically, you do have an ass named after you, because, you know, your ass is named also Jason, right? Because it's your body? My ass is not named also Jason Wright. <laughs> sure. 
Now, in true uh, Skepticon fashion, Rebecca has not told me her talk title or description. She'll probably just show up and do whatever she wants, which is her MO. And I'd, I'd like to be mad about it, but I kind of enjoy the surprise, but I know that's not everyone's bag. So... Uh, it's kind of her MO is just showing it, up and do whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> That's great. And this uh, is this is like a positive endorsement. <laughs> I mean, yeah. She always gives really entertaining and really fascinating talks, so I'm not worried that it's gonna be boring or lame and that like I need to make sure that it's not gonna be you know, like her talk isn't gonna be boring, but sometimes it's nice to know ahead of time, but that's just Rebecca doesn't want us to know. She okay. likes to remain mysterious she is the wind you can't pin her down yeah basically <laughs> yeah that and uh, I don't think she writes her talk until like the week before so you know yeah that's fair that's fair I didn't I didn't play this uh, this game until day of so was, makes sense yeah. yep we didn't have any of this scripted we just basically decided that we were going to get on camera for 12 hours and ramble incessantly while I play a video game. So. Yeah! So far so good, I think. Yeah. I think we're doing okay. We're doing okay. I am proud of us. Mostly I'm proud of me. Understandable. I'm not doing so hot, so... Oh, oh hell. Well, that's, that's, that sounds like good. That sounds good, yeah? Something good happened? Yeah, lots of good. Just oh, okay. Robots uh, face humping my poor little Mega Man. That's, that's non consensual. Great. No, no. I did not consent to this. I, I want I want you to know that robots with sentience mm -hmm. require consent as well. Um, they were not built to be sex bots. They are thinking, <laughs> feeling creatures. Just the stilted, robotic way you're telling me this is like, it's robotic. Are you one of the robots you're speaking on behalf of? Uh, no, obviously not. <laughs> oh, I don't believe you. I am not a robot. I am Asgar, a robot. I can put my arm back on. You can't, so play safe. <laughs> this is a... I should tell you about that. That's actually a, a Canadian um, thing. It's like this commercial that was that was on Canadian television quite a bit uh, about this robot that lives on planet danger. And like, planet danger? Yeah, dives between oh. all these gears and shit. And it's actually kind of a cool commercial. It's got like pretty good production value. It's like something that you would see in like. 1980s Star Trek ish. Yeah. It's kind of amazing that this creature is diving between all these gears and then gets her arm cut off. Okay. And then tells kids not not to do weird, wild things like dive between gears and stuff because she's a robot and could put her arm back on. But and kids you can't. can't. Kids cannot put their arms back on. <laughs> like, this is a serious public service announcement type commercial. And you know, like a lot of thought and effort went into that, and that's the yeah. best to come up with. Is like diving into gears, robots, perfect, nailed it. Right. In the can, we got this. Wow. <laughs> Print it. Go to press. We're yes. Money on the table. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. Oh, good times. I could tell you all sorts of things about Canadian commercials. Uh, all of the Canadian heritage moments that were funded by the Canadian government to tell about various things that are Canadian. Things like Winnie the Pooh or Superman. Winnie the Pooh was apparently created by a... a guy and his nephew uh, visiting the Toronto Zoo and seeing a captive bear named Winnie. The poo part, I guess, just came because the kid likes the word poo. Um, I mean, what kid doesn't like the word poo? Right. Shoot. What what adult doesn't? <laughs> yeah, I There's mean... There's an emoji for I, it. Yeah, I was gonna say, means. I think I use the poop emoji the most often. That and the pizza one. Pizza I know what I'm emoji. about. <laughs> I, 
anyway, Jason, I want to interrupt you for a minute. Sure. We've had a hundred dollar donation come in this wow. morning, and I'm gonna say it's because of us, just because well, we can. Clearly, we're the only ones putting in any effort around here. God. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't I'm, know I'm, about that. But, yeah. Actually, I totally want you to talk about all the people who are behind the scenes who do all of the things that don't normally get the credit. At some I, point or another, oh. you get to talk about people like like Rebecca and Rebecca. And... Yeah, there's two Rebeccas. Anyway, I have one more speaker to talk about, and then we can talk about the team. Okay, cool. All right. Alex Jules will be joining us this year. Alex Jules is... Yes. Also a blogger at the Orbit, and though well, hasn't really done much in the way of uh, Orbit posting lately, but really, really cool guy. Uh, yeah, he's a secular activist in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, he's commonly involved with, in issues and topics regarding uh, the role of diversity in the atheist community, as well as atheism in diverse communities. He's the chair of the Dallas Fort Worth, Fort Worth Coalition of Reasons Diversity Council. He's an organizer for Black Nonbelievers of Dallas and is a founding member of the largest family-based secular humanist organization in Texas, Texas, which is called the Fellowship of Free Thought. Cool. Yeah. And he's also a regular co-host on Dogma Debate. He says that he's the funny one. He so actually if you're wondering. Really is. He, he is. It's All true. Right. It's true, though. Oh, yeah. I don't. Admittedly, I don't have a lot of. Uh, I mean, I've not listened to Dogma Debate very often. Um, I, I used to a lot more than I do. Uh, I it's like know. out of time because we're doing so many other things. Yeah. Uh, lately, I've been really, really busy with work. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a few podcasts that I listen to fairly regularly, one of them being the Rachel Maddow Show. Uh, oh, I love Rachel Maddow. Which I love that she has her show in podcast form. Now. This is really great. Um, what? Um, also, Science for the People, which I already shouted out once. I'll shout out again. Desiree Shell does an amazing skeptical podcast. Mm, slash yes. Radio show. Desiree's awesome. She's the bomb, as the kids say. The kids say that, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they do. Okay. Just don't say that in an airport. <laughs> That plane flight was the bomb. <laughs> oh god! Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. It's okay though, cause I'm white, uh, so oh. nothing would happen to me. Totally. You're basically uh, as a white dude immune to all things. I mean, Sam Harris says that there's no reason we shouldn't um, profile Muslim folks, which I'd like to know what a Muslim person looks like. What he means is brown people basically. Um, I'm shocked that Sam Harris would say something like that. Shocked. Um, we are we are a fairly progressive section of this movement. Um, fairly liberal and lots of lots of libertarian folks and they don't seem yeah. to like us very much, do they? I no. Um no but I'm not sure I care, honestly. No, me neither. Yep. Anyhow, Alex will be joining us, and I don't have a talk topic from him quite yet, but I'm sure whatever he talks about is going to be the bomb. Huh? Huh? Get it? Get it? Oh, uh, good callback <laughs> to ten seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm awesome like that. Alright, um... Like I said way earlier, uh, Skepticon is also going to be featuring two panels this year. Now, we've not had panels for a couple years. I think our most famous one was the death panel we did about death and dying in grief. <laughs> the death panel. Yeah, we did, I think, Skepticon 4. We had, yeah, so it's been quite a few years since we've had um, panels, and this year we're going to have two. The first one is going to be called Exploring Polyamory. Okay. 
and I have a description for us all. It, uh, the panel is going to be about the slippery slope people may have been right. <laughs> Polyamory is falling hard on the heels of same-sex marriage, though truth be told, it's been around for quite a while. A lot of people will want to tell you the right way to approach polyamory, but in this panel, we'll explore the experiences of several people who approach polyamory from different perspectives. It's going to be moderated by Stephanie Zvan, and the panelists are Hina Databoy, Joshua Hyde, Nola Olson, and Benny Vimes. And by polyamory, we're not talking about like the, the Mormon polygamy. No, we're not talking about have like multiple wives or husbands, and then I don't know, <laughs> making them dress funny. Is that part of Mormonism? Is making them dress funny? like wear special underwear? Yes, that that would be Mormonism. Yeah. yeah. Way to go! You've aced the know your religions test. I wasn't raised religiously, so every learned about religion has been like piecemeal over the years. That's interesting. I only know a few people who've not been raised in religion. Um, a friend from university, uh, Stephanie, uh, mm -hmm. only a couple of people who grew up secular, which is a really interesting paradigm for me coming from a background where I was actually raised uh, French Catholic. And I say French specifically because, you know, yeah, what? French Catholicism is very uh, heavily steeped in the, you know, the saints and stuff. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just getting murdered in the face. <laughs> in the face. <laughs> murdered in the face by a robot. Um, so I, I grew up French Catholic. Um, my father had me enter yeah. Sunday school, uh, had me confirmed, etc. Um, I say my father, but I'm, I'm sure that there was like community involvement in this too. Um, mm -hmm. While my father was a particularly liberal person, he was also very steeped in religion. Mm -hmm. Over the years, this has led to a number of issues between me and my father, like including that we're pretty much estranged. Weird. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Mostly because Sorry, he that. seriously mistreated my sister, who was gay. Uh, oh, that. Yeah. Uh, so good times. A good time was had by all. Um, totally. I love my little sister. She's getting married next month, and I'm going to be her best man. And That's awesome. At her wedding. Oh, no pressure. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I should maybe write something sometime. Uh, yeah. Maybe. You might think about it. Maybe. And uh, I'm still grinding for energy here before this boss battle, and then I'm going to have to run, run away and use the washroom um, once I'm done with... The washroom. Yes, the washroom. I'm trying to say the, I, I need to... The get pee to palace. The, the pea palace, <laughs> the, the John, the uh, porcelain throne. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not Leslie Nope in real life. I am, for sure. Nah, I just wish I was. Yeah. Alright, well, before you sneak off, I'll talk about the other panel so you can hear about it. Sure. Well, let me find the title. Hold on. Art and Activism. Nailed it. That's the one. Art We're going to have a panel activism. on art and activism. Who, who do we know that's an artist? Gosh, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> All right. The, the description I've got here, it says, We usually think of art put to use in activism, protest signs, and messages for t-shirts. But in this panel, we'll explore art that is activism in itself. To do that, we'll talk about what art is and what activism is, covering a wide range of mediums, forms, and formats. And the panelists are Greta Christina... Alex Jules, Ashley Miller, and myself. Shocker. Well, that's a that's a bang up lineup. It's gonna be really, really interesting. I'm pretty excited, and the moderator will be Josiah Mannion. Mannion? I don't know how you say his last name. I've never said it out loud. Mannion. I think so. Yeah. Mannion. Man. Mannion. <laughs> Man Ion. <I> just, <laughs> Josiah Bible name. Like that's how I usually refer to him, and so I. Yeah. Um, Sorry, might, I butchered your name. People in the movement might know him from the photos that he usually takes at almost every convention that he's at. Um, I've been yeah. tagged in a number of them. 
though I'm usually pretty photo shy. Um, yeah. He has been taking pictures at Skepticon for many years now, and he says that his activism is taking pictures at cons and then, you know, sharing them on social media, which you know is important. Having that kind of visibility, that documentation. Yeah, definitely. Um, being able to show that we're human beings that are gathering in the room to talk about how awful the world is and how to fix it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we exist and we're doing things. <laughs> I have to go run to the washroom. Uh, okay. You keep talking. Oh, good. I'll do that. Just talk to myself because that's not weird. I mean, you, could just, you could pick your nose. Uh, you're on camera, so. If I pick my nose, everyone's going to see. But I mean, it's your choice. You, your call. You you do you. I I'm I'll do it. Right. I'll do the me thing. Alright. I'll be right back. Good, go. <laughs> Is he gone? Oh thank god. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, here I am talking to myself. This isn't weird at all. Um, I hope you're all enjoying the live stream of Mega Man. I think Oh, ooh, I hope it's mega awesome. Eh? Uh, yeah? Puns? Anyone? No? I literally have no idea what kind of reaction you're giving, so I hope it's a good one. And if it's not, it's Sunday morning, that's all you're going to get. <laughs> uh, th anyway, thank you all for joining us. If you're interested in supporting Skepticon or learning more about it, you can find all the information you could ever want to know on our website, which is skepticon.org, S-K-E-P-T-I-C-O-N. Uh, we've got a blog where we do all of our press releases. We've got who's going to be speaking on the side panel. And we've got a fact section if you have a frequently asked question. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll be hosted this year, uh, November 11th, 12th, and 13th at the Romada Oasis Hotel and Convention Center, which if you've never been to Skepticon, this hotel, while it is a little bit of a labyrinth, it's kind of maze-like, it has glitter floors. Now, I don't know if that's a selling point for you, but for me, glitter floors are just like, I'm sold. And that's partly the reason why we went to this new venue. Glitter floors! Hi, welcome back. Thanks for holding the fort. You're very welcome. Cleaner floors? What? I know! Glitter floors! Glitter. I'm talking about the, the convention center we're going to be at, the Ramada Oasis Hotel and Convention Center. Okay. We do, yeah, we do have a discount rate, but you're going to have to call them on the phone if you'd like to reserve a room, because they're, they're online, it was buggy, and so they just decided to stop doing online reservations with, with codes, so you'll have to call and talk to a person, which kind of sucks, but you'll get a cheaper room if you do it that way. Say you're with Skepticon, hang out with us that weekend, enjoy the teal glitter floors with me, and the chintzy fake palm trees. Oh my god. I need to talk about the most important part. Their breakfast is free and amazing. It's so good. I, I can't put it into words breakfast? how much okay. their their breakfast is so good. They've got like they've got a big cereal bar, they've got muffins, they've got fruit, they've got eggs, they got bacon, they have like biscuits, they have it all. They have it biscuits. all and it's beautiful. Oh my god. Shut up, Canadian! No one cares about you and your biscuit hate. You know what? Actually, uh, the Skepticon that I went to um, three years ago was the first time I had biscuits and gravy. Was it a good experience? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, I'm not a biscuits and gravy person either. Uh, you know, Missouri is not exactly a southern or a northern state, as we all know from history. <laughs> <laughs> so, as uh, we all I mean, know, except for the Canadian. <laughs> Yes, I know. Civil War. Uh, anyway. Yeah, but uh, like biscuits and gravy is like a southern Missouri thing, so in Springfield it's a thing, but it, I'm in St. Louis, which is admittedly on the other side of the state, but it's northern. And I mean, I didn't know biscuits and gravy was a thing until I went to college in a more southern area of Missouri. Okay. I mean, it's on the menus of the breakfast places here, but in my family, we're just not a biscuits and gravy kind of kind of family so I <laughs> there's a biscuits and gravy kind of family <laughs> well I <laughs> it means something that biscuits and gravy like it means something in the in the south the southern area that biscuits and gravy eat and stuff yeah 
It does! Shut up! Uh, I forgot to add a death to my counter a while ago. I'm gonna add one now. Uh, and because it took me a long time just to get to here, I'm going to save state. You, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't I can know. Save. save. I can save games and then restore them if I wanted to, but I've been not doing that because I kind of consider it cheating for this. Um, this, however, is not a particularly great Mega Man game. I'd love to just blow through it and then continue on to the good ones. Uh -huh. um, so I kind of want to save state and then continue from here. Um, I don't know if people will be upset with me for cheating that way. I think you're holding yourself to a very high standard that, um, how do I say this? Nice, no one gives a crap about. Nobody else cares. <laughs> no. I don't think anyone cares as much as you about that, so I say do whatever you feel is best. Fair enough. Fair enough. As long as people in the chat aren't going to be upset about this. Well, if they are, just, I don't know. You're going to have to answer to them. It's true. I will <laughs> have to answer to them. Mm-hmm. Not, like my own um, ludicrous sense of morality here that I'm cheating somehow that I'm taking the easy way out that I'm screwing mm -hmm. the rest mm -hmm. of, of this uh, screwing everybody else who's depending on me I'm, I'm the universe's only hope I'm the only one who can stop Wily's evil schemes. You really are, and if you mess this up, there's no one left. You're That's the last true. line of defense. I am the Great White Hope. The Great White Hope? The yeah. The Great White Hope. <laughs> Is that because you're tall? What? That doesn't you're make tall. any sense. I don't... Shut up. <laughs> you shut up. You shut up. You shut up. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you all about the Skepticon team because I know you've just been dying to know. I, I love the Skepticon team. I want you to tell me all about the Skepticon team, please. I will! Now, Skepticon is run entirely by volunteers. People who have lives of their own, full-time jobs, families, etc. Use their spare time to make this conference happen. And so, uh, there's, I want to say, less than a dozen of us at any given time working on things. Uh, we have two Rebeccas on the team. We separate them by color because one Rebecca has red hair, so we call her Red Becca, and the other doesn't have red hair, so we call her Blue Becca because that makes sense. You separate them by color. I didn't hmm. say it made sense. It's just how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> they're my team, and they're wonderful, and we have nicknames because we're cool. Yeah, okay. You're pretty yeah. Cool. Anyway, Red Becca is in charge of our merch. So uh, t-shirts, shot glasses, pint glasses. She does all of the ordering and the arranging and inventorying of those things, uh, as well as, you know, contributing to the overall sanity of the team. And that's a good thing to maintain when yes. you're basically 100% uh, of the time on in conference mode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's helpful to have good, competent people <laughs> around during your conference, your three-day conference, which is like a marathon of all faculties. Self-care is not selfish. It's not, but when you're running a conference live and in person, you just gotta band-aid it and move on. Right. Like, you can collapse on Monday, but right now, it's Saturday afternoon. <laughs> we, we have some a ways to go. <laughs> God, you've only been at it for 20 minutes. Just <laughs> <laughs> You've been here for five minutes. Stop whining. Right. Do your feet even hurt yet? Jeez. <laughs> All right, uh, That's blue a thing Becca. that we should talk about. Oh, at some point, hurt? is, no, uh, like, how to take care of yourself at a convention. Like, yes. how to self-care. Uh, yeah, but keep going it. with the Blue Becca. <laughs> okay. Blue Becca is our numbers lady. She, uh... He's like a board certified accountant and she helped us incorporate officially as a 501c3 and she's amazing and I love her with all of my heart. My okay. god, the heart. Yes. She um, 
has all of the financials on the website. So if you're curious as to where your money goes and how we spend it when you donate to us, you can find that all on the website under our financials tab that Blue Becca keeps updated for you all. And she's also in charge of the prom, and she'll be joining you around 6 o'clock tonight to talk about prom. Okay. That and fun. also, um, like, she's handling some, well, all of the attendee slash accessibility things that we're doing, like communication code stickers and um, hallways that will have a walking and a standing stopping side and our gender neutral bathrooms. She'll be talking all about the, those things that we do uh, this evening with you. Okay. That sounds fun. Yes. Uh, Blythe is our stage manager. She's the one you see running around with coffee in her hands, constantly uh, miking people. I think she'll be stepping down this year. And Jason, aren't you going to be stepping up to be our stage manager? Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm Uh going to do microphoning of peoples. Uh, I don't know exactly what that entails, but I'll find out. It's where you put a microphone on people. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I think I can handle this. Yeah, I... Sounds good. Sounds good so far. It's it's actually trickier than a lot of people think. Like if you're not, if you haven't been involved in theater or, or video, to get a microphone properly on someone so there's not crackling or like their hair is messing with it and there's good audio, it, it there's there's some skill to it. Okay, well, I next think I can up, handle it. I'm yeah. I'm pretty good with the technologies. Um, I mean, you're gonna have to handle it. So it's time to choice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Blythe is actually, she's a nurse and she couldn't get off on the weekend of the con this year. So she'll be saving actual lives. (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) Not like us. Not like us who are just dorking around, you know, doing like we do. Oh yeah. Uh, Bart is our web tech guy. I like to call him a wizard because I'm pretty sure he's actually one. <laughs> okay. Bart, the website's broken. Fix it. And he's like, oh, it's just gotta do the button and the thing and I fixed it. <laughs> he's magic. He's magical. Yes. He's a web, wizard. Web people are magic. That's Bart. He's our, our resident wizard. Good times. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who else we got? Oh, Micah. Micah, uh, he's had to take a step down this year, but in the past he's done a lot of our uh, like outreach, like local outreach. Like he was the one who decided that we should do a blood drive, and then we do a blood drive every year. And um, he's very good at talking with media, so he does a lot of spots with local media and newspapers and getting local communities and groups involved. He's had to... Like he's changed jobs and like moved in with a girlfriend this year, so I know my volunteer has a life, and I'm mad, but I'm also really happy for him. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> you really have high standards for your people, don't you? <laughs> I know, right? <sighs> my God, God, you're just mm, yeah, having having a life. Uh, you have a girlfriend. Yeah, like how uh, dare you? Like go and be happy and have a life and. And do really cool stuff and fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. I mean, he's been around and he'll be there at like during the weekend of, which is important. So it's 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 all good. Uh, Joshin is one of our photographers. She's wonderful. She lives in Kansas City. She uh, she was telling me that she has eight different photography editing apps on her phone like she is so ready to document everything that happens that weekend I'm a little intimidated <laughs> awesome yeah <laughs> uh, but she is so great and I don't think I have enough wonderful things to say about her like honestly I'm trying I'm sitting here like yeah no everything's good she continually amazes me and impresses me with how awesome she is so she's going to be documenting, like... Yeah, she's one of the photographers that we have running around that weekend, so she'll be taking pictures of speakers as they're speaking, like the audience, get some audience shots. Uh, just, you know, do- tablers, just taking it all in and documenting, along with Josiah, who will be there as a the photographer, as he has been for the past couple of years. And this year, Josiah will also be moderating a panel 
on art and activism, as we talked about earlier. Cool. Very cool. It's uh, it's good to have people with various diverse talents to help you out. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Jeffrey uh, has been in charge of I mean, the whole shebang, uh, tables and workshops. And this year he's taking a step back and he's just gonna be doing a lot of weekend of coordinating with tech and the workshops. Uh, he has, I think, a lot of theater tech experience. He went to school for sculpture, which is pretty fun. He's got a BFA in sculpture. Another Skepticon art, arty. These art people. These art people. I know, right? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Steven Olson. He is in charge of the tables and workshops this year, and he's all, he's still looking for workshoppers. So if anyone out there would like to host a workshop with us, they they run Friday morning from about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. before our speakers start on Friday. If you'd like to give an interactive presentation on pretty much anything, hit Steven up at steven at skepticon.org. That's his email address. Also, if you'd like to table, he's the man you will talk to. And Steven has been, like, around for many years, but he recently moved back to Springfield from Portland, so he's able to do a lot of more, like, on-the-ground organizing that he's really excited about this year. That sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, Floyd is another one of our lovely Skepticon team members. He's done a lot of, oh my gosh, like, everything. Like, he's done a lot of graphic <laughs> design for us. I think he's design, designed and named most of the dinosaurs that we have as mascots. And he's also made up, like, elaborate, elaborate backstories for all of them that I wish I could remember and tell you now. But I don't. And I'm so elaborate sorry. Elaborate backstories for the yeah. logo dinosaurs, specifically? Yes. Like, there's the Stegosaurus, whose name is Carl, after Carl Sagan. And then the Apatosaurus is named Marie after Mary Curie. And okay. like they both, like he's got their personalities down, their likes and dislikes. Uh, it's just like <laughs> Terry the Pterodactyl. I think the only thing I remember about Terry the Pterodactyl is that he's a fiscal conservative. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're so. He's a fiscal uh, really, conservative. That's good to I know. Really, I know. I know. Dinosaur I, economics is, I mean. <laughs> Like, every economist that I know is a dinosaur anyway, so... Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I really have uh. to have him write them down so we can put them on the website somewhere, because they're just so fun and hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Floyd's done all kinds of things for us this uh, in the past couple years, and this year I think he's focusing on Weekend of Dynamics. He's uh, He said contact juggler, so if you've seen someone contact juggling... Oh, that's cool. That's Floyd, and he has a, an identical twin. So if you see someone not contact juggling who looks like Floyd, <laughs> it's probably his twin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, we don't tell people that he has a twin, by and large, because we think it's funny when they play tricks on people. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, except they they do actually look a little bit different from each other. So... They do, but unless you're really familiar with Floyd, you would never know that he wasn't Valentino, right? Mm. So... Or Tony, as it were. Oh, I didn't know that you were supposed to call him Tony. I've always called him Val Valentino. <laughs> I don't know if he prefers either name because he responds to both. It's kind of like whatevs. <laughs> okay. Good to know. I mean, I don't. I'm not aware of him preferring one name. Or I should probably ask before I start like saying his name on live streams and shit, right? Whoops. Right. Oops. <laughs> Oopsies. And last but certainly not least on our list of, of Skepticon team is Rob, who's our videographer, who sits in a chair all weekend making sure that all the talks are recorded. Which is a big thing. Yeah, it it's a, a, a to-do. Uh, it's not a small task, and he's... Rob's the right guy for the job because he's very particular about the audio and the video being very very high quality and doing the best that he can and so he's got very high standards which we appreciate because it makes our videos look that much better and Rob does a lot of cool stuff like um, he's got a few documentaries under his belt his most recent is called Thunderdome and it's about the nerf obstacle course for lack of a better term that he built in his backyard nerf obstacle course what? yeah 
it's like a Nerf arena that he built in his backyard. You've got to look it up. Uh, Thunderdome documentary is what it is on Facebook, and it's. Rob bought a house, um, God, I don't even know how many years ago, and in his backyard. Alright, I'm gonna do a really, like, crap job of giving you the synopsis. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like, cause, uh, I, I mean, I know this story, but I'm not sure, like, what his elevator speech is. So, Rob decided many, many years ago to go on a cross country slash continent backpacking trip with two of his Christian friends. Like, he was the atheist. They, they were the Christians. They were going to document living on like $1.25 a day as they hitchhiked across America and then Europe and down to Africa. It's basically... Uh, oh my god, I'm doing such a bad job. <laughs> but they were doing the I know. They were doing the documentary to talk about, you know, poverty and, and atheism versus Christianity and doing good things and what it takes to be a good person and how to help the world. Etc. And while they were filming that documentary, he was in a plane crash in Africa where oh no. the pilot and co-pilot died and he had to pull his friend out of like a flaming plane. It is really harrowing to watch this footage. And so after that documentary and the plane crash, he was coping with a lot of PTSD. And one of those ways in which he coped was building this Thunderdome arena in his backyard where he played nerf games with his friends wow okay yeah and it became a movement essentially it, like he built this nerf very loving nerf community around this thing that was fueled entirely by like his fear of dying and his ptsd so the documentary is great i've seen a couple of versions of it because I, i'm the one of the people he sent it to to get um, feedback and it it's a great, it's a fascinating story. I highly recommend anyone who's interested in Nerf or, you know, um, awesome documentaries to check it out. Uh, Rob is a really cool, interesting guy, and I think a lot of people will, will like this documentary. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the first I've heard of it. And... I'm hoping that he can do a screening at Skepticon this year, but I think the only time we'd have... For it is uh, probably Friday during the day to do a screening but he does have I want to say he's launching it online I'm not sure the whole version is available online but he had a Kickstarter where you could buy a DVD version uh, I'm sure if you hit him up you could buy a copy okay that's good to know mm -hmm. and that is by and large the Skepticon team let's see <laughs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 yep 12 people including myself I love the fact that you don't know how big your team is. Well, uh, you know, we all volunteer, and so, you know, life happens, and we step up and down as appropriate. So sometimes, you know, a few people have to take a step down, and other people step up, so it fluctuates. So I say there's about a dozen of us at any given time, because that's more or less true and accurate, or as accurate as I can be. Okay. It looks like Vaughn is going to be Skyping in very soon. Okay. We'll I won't break. even mention Vaughn because I'm rude. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Vaughn? Tell us about Vaughn now. Vaughn is our, our new volunteer uh, team member this year. He's working with Bart. Uh, Bart basically roped him in to help him with wizarding. Okay. Wizarding. Yeah, I'm sure Vaughn can tell you all about what he's doing this year whenever he's on. But we're happy to have him. He's a, he's a local. I think he lives in Nixa or nearabouts Nixa, or maybe I'm just making that up. <laughs> okay. But he lives nearabouts Springfield. And um, by and large, he's a cool dude. So far, so good. Good to know. You've got a great team backing you. Yeah, you know, a lot of these people I, I went to school with. Like, I want to say most of the team I, I met as an undergrad in college and we've continued to work on this very fun project ever since and you know uh, Rebecca found us by attending one year instead of Tam and was like oh my god how can I help and we were like you you want to help you can never leave <laughs> you know? oh my goodness gracious somebody is actually willing to talk to us I need help 
pretty much. <laughs> it's, it's very true. And, you know, Bart found us. I actually, Bart became our webmaster because he insulted our website and told me it was terrible. And I said, well, then you have to make it better now. Here's your job. <laughs> he just, he didn't say no. <laughs> That's how it works, pretty much. Yeah. I was like, well, all right, make us a better one and you could be in charge of it so you can stop complaining about how horrible our website is. <laughs> so people meaning you. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, uh, Josh and, uh, was an attendee, became an attendee, and then, you know, asked if she could take pictures and share them, and we were like, please, don't even, just do it, yes, do it, please. And, you know, Josiah as well, kind of. Yeah, I think Josiah kind of freelanced to begin with, so. Mm. He, he does that a lot, and so. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It's, um, it's nice to have a volunteer army. It is. Who are all professionals in their right. So. It is, and I. If I were, if I were differently minded, I might say it's divine intervention that all these people have come to Skepticon. <laughs> but um, uh-huh. it's some sort of magical what's it? We've worked with, and we still work with a lot of great people who are very passionate about Skepticon and making it happen, and frankly, keep me around. You know, I'm nine years in, and I'm. Yeah, I'm the veteran of the group, and you would think that, you know, what, what we call burnout would have shown up by now, but <laughs> they all make me so happy and so proud to work with them. I just... Oh. Yeah, I'm going to tear up if I think about it too much, but they're just so good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm fighting big bads right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could have this really, like, tearful, emotional moment while you're fighting big bads. <laughs> Oh, and I just beat him. Yay! Yay! Yeah, um, Skepticon team are good people, and I, I like them a lot. I think I'll keep them. <laughs> no one else can have them. They're mine. Back right. up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am in the whoa. Uh, let's say second area of third area of the final boss castle uh, and it got it like is... shit got ridiculously real um, how many areas total are there because I don't know there's there's six main bosses and then there's I think five areas during this last castle this run up to Dr. Wily um, alrighty I'm barely holding it together um I'm about to face Wily for the first time once mm-hmm. I get through this stage. And yes. then I let's say that I beat him, then in about twenty minutes I'll be starting Mega Man 2 and I'll have earned us twenty-five dollars. That's amazing! You've done it! Well you're yay, close to doing it, right? So yay! Right. <laughs> yay! Maybe eventually. I'm so proud of you, I think kind of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> now, Skepticon started as a an event with two speakers that only lasted a couple hours, um, but now you know it's a three-day event, and we I guess we can talk a little bit about self-care at conventions because it is a marathon. Yes, it's a marathon, not a not a sprint. Sprint, yeah. That's how the phrase goes. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Your human no. phrases don't make sense to me. I am a simple, unfrozen Canadian. Oh, it looks like Vaughn is ready. He just needs um, an invite to talk to us. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure that I can actually do two um, okay. Skype calls well. at once, but I could jump him in and we could talk for a bit. I'm happy to take a step back for a while if that's what needs to happen. I kind of think it does. Uh, does he have my Skype contact? Which yes. I will not scream out on the live stream. Jason's Skype contact is uh, butts, 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 3000. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Andre 3000, but with more butts. Yes. 3000 more butts. <laughs> <laughs> it's... um. America is ca- Canada's pants. Yes, America oh, is Canada's pants. Canada's <laughs> shorts. Shorts. 
Not pants, they're just shorts. And uh, Florida is the accidental slippage of the, the member. Ew. Florida. <laughs> I mean, it's Florida, so. Uh, yeah, no, I know. That's why I'm making a face. <laughs> so I don't have him on my contact list yet, so clearly he has not tried to add me. Okay, I will find his... I'll ask his name. Oh, I just heard a thing that is probably him trying to make me uh, contact. I need to pause. Cool. Well, I need to find some place where I'm not going to die. Okay. Now I'm going to pause, and I'm going to add him, and... Perfect! I will talk to you eventually. I'll instant message you when when Vaughn is off. Okay, sounds great. Talk That's soon! Talk. Okay!